good morning, everyone. Um, we're going to start with the, um, the karakia in just a moment, but welcome to this um, uh, extra council meeting. Uh, it's not an extraordinary meeting, but just, um, it is an extra meeting uh, which we've scheduled for um, very important reasons. I'm going to start with the karakia. Whakatakatahau ki ti uru, whakatakatahau ki ti tonga. Kia mā kina kini ki uta, kia mā taratara ki tai, e hi aki ana te atakura, e teo, e hoka, e hauhu, tihei Māori ora. Um, I, now, I don't have any apologies, but um, for those who are watching, um, there are quite a number of councillors who are not feeling uh, well. Uh, this is definitely going around or have uh, um, had other reasons. Uh, they're going to keep their, um, uh, their videos off for much of the, the time. Um, and that also is why we're doing this meeting um, online, because we have quite a number of councillors who are, uh, who are not well for one reason or another. But I don't have any apologies. So I don't have to move anything there. I do have a little announcement that I do want to make though. Um, and it's, so I'll go to that now. Uh, so councillors, as we ease into a new financial year and uh, council's traditional recess month, I just wanted to briefly reflect on what has been an extraordinary last two weeks of, of really big decisions and delivery for our city. And it's a chance to say thank you to councillors uh, to management and to staff for an enormous amount of hard work and ongoing hard work. As a council, we deliberately have put our foot to the floor. We said we want to get things done, and throughout the triennium, we have. But the last two weeks in particular, we've, we've had some disagreements and agreements along the way. We've made decisions and we've moved on, and we'll do that again today. Two weeks ago, we agreed the first comprehensive district plan in 22 years. Last week, we adopted an annual plan. We agreed on an option for sewage sludge treatment, which is a huge and critical investment for our city. And we agreed on a landfill option. And together, those two investments opened the way for a much more sustainable, lower waste future. We also confirmed extra funding arrangements for our town hall. We agreed to establish a community housing provider, a milestone step in getting our community housing out of an ever deepening hole and better supporting tenants and enabling building of new, much needed social housing stock. We celebrated Matariki for the first time a national holiday and I got a lot of good feedback on the, uh, on the fireworks incidentally. I think a lot of people enjoyed being down there uh, at the waterfront. We celebrated reopening our beloved St James Theatre and Teeks and the NZSO played to a full house three nights straight. The airport express bus started last Thursday, uh, last Friday and yesterday we heard that 3,000 people used it in the first four days. That's three times what the airport flyer did in, the, in a, a month in its final months. That's pre-COVID. And as an airport board member in particular, I'm delighted we've got this quality service back. And today we'll provide so a response to government's water reform um, regulation, uh, I'm sorry, water reform regulations, uh, and uh, to um, agree a milestone step in getting Wellington moving, providing certainty on the proposed direction for future transport and urban form of our city following government's announcements last week. I think whatever way you look at it, councillors, uh, that is an extraordinary level of delivery in anyone's language. And I just want to say thank you to all of you for the roles that you have played in that. Thank you, councillors. Uh, are there any conflict of interest declarations? I don't see any. No? Okay, that's fine. Uh, confirmation of the minutes. Uh, now, Heidi, we're just confirming the minutes of the 30th. That's correct? Yes. Okay, so I will move those. Uh, seconded, I can see Councillor Matthews on the top left-hand corner, so would you like to second? Especially given that we had the annual plan there. Cool, good, thank you. Any debate? I see none. If you can vote, please. I think we're done there. Thank uh, you. Just waiting on a vote from Councillor Foon. There we go. That's 14 votes in favour. Carried Thank unanimously. Thank you. Okay. There are no items not on the agenda. There is no, uh, there'll be no request for public participation. Uh, now, councillors, um, just to remind you, we're going to take a break from 11 to 12.15. Um, thank you for that. At the time when we do that, we'll need to um, a vote to do that because it's over an hour in terms of the break. Um, I'm hoping that we will have well and truly dealt with the, uh, the water services entity submission by that stage and that will allow the let's get wellington moving team to have got from <coughs> from uh greater wellington which is where they are um first up 
and then be able to come back to us to assist us if, they, if we need that uh, or in our debate um, later on. So uh, that takes us to the Water Services Entity Bill. Um, and I just invite, we've had a briefing on this already. Uh, I know it's going to be one that we'll have a debate on, but I'd like to invite um, Chris Matthews uh, and Siobhan and Rebecca Adams uh, to, come, uh, to make any comments they want to in the debate. Okay, sorry. Apologies. <laughs> You're on mute. <laughs> trying, to to right, story. trying to find the right button. Uh, Morena Council. Um, so this is the first of two water services entity bills that we're providing a submission on. Um, this is the first one that sets up the entities. It covers the governance and accountability arrangements. The second bill, which is due out later this year, is where a lot of the nitty gritty detail will come around the asset and liabilities transfer and the economic and consumer protections that uh, will be put in place. Um, we did present uh, to you last week covering off uh, the key contents of the bill and the key points of our submission, and we took feedback from you and have included the, that feedback in the submission. Um, the general direction of the Three Waters Reform Programme aligns with many of the Mayoral Task Force conclusions, including the need to increase investment in our Three Waters assets and the current limitations on Council to provide for that level of investment that's required. Um, the need for a step change, um, especially around asset management practices and the need to support Wellington's forecast growth by investing heavily to support capacity upgrades in the water network. Um, the submission points out the areas that uh, we have feel there's needs more work. Um, the concern that the local community interests are safeguarded and represented in the process. Um, and once those water service entities are established, um, the concern about how the planning process is all linked to the, sp the spatial planning process, um, assurance around board appointment process, um, and also highlighting the risks around standard of asset management plans on day one of the new water service entities as they're going to rely on existing plans. Um, also took the point um, that um, I think, Mayor, you made was around uncertainty on how the pricing and revenue recovery will work on day one. Um, we've also taken the opportunity, so many of those really relate to the transition risk um, and specifically with the loss of key staff from Wellington Water, which could adversely impact the day-to-day -day service provision of um, Wellington Water. So overall, um, uh, the submission does highlight those concerns that were raised at the workshop. Um, the submission is due on the 22nd of July, so there is um, some ability to modify it. Um, but yeah, happy to take feedback and questions. And online, I think we have um, Ben Henderson and Jeff Lawson um, from the policy team who assisted in putting the submission together. Thanks, Siobhan. Um, I'll take questions, but only questions that have not already been um, asked in the previous sessions. So if I can identify those questions that haven't been asked, I'll, I will stop them. Uh, Councillor Panett, then Councillor Calvert. Um, thank you, Mayor Foster, and thank you to the team for the work. Um, Siobhan, I, I, I did ask um, you this by text. I, I'm just a bit unclear about why we've only provided a, a very brief three-page really letter um, usually, Wellington City Council, with its um, enormous expertise and capacity, um, does very comprehensive submissions. This bill's 164 pages. Um, so I was just a bit unclear why we were so light on this. Thank you. Um, so in terms of the submission itself, um, we have hit all of the points that we think need to be made. Um, we are aware of other submissions which are, I think, um, Tartoria is 56 pages, but actually it doesn't really add that much more to what we've already put in our submission. Um, so we think we've, we've hit the key points. Councillor Calvert. Um, thank you. Um, do you think there's an opportunity to talk a little bit about how the um, implementation could be sequenced? Um, it's because at the moment it all seems quite just a, a big bang approach and whether there's an opportunity for 
some sort of suggestion around sequencing, such as getting the regulators up and running first and then the other reforms. So just wondering whether you could comment on that. Um, so the submission is on the bill itself. So, uh, you know, we should be focusing on the, those elements. However, given that we have um, already indicated the transition risk, we can put something in there around um, the need for the economic regulation to be, you know, or acknowledge that the economic regulator needs to be brought on as soon as possible. Um, but in terms of those specific around transition, um, again, it's just going to be comments, but I'm not sure how much attention the select committee will give to that, given that they're hearing on the bill itself, the submissions on the bill itself. Okay. Surely, wouldn't the bill, um, uh, excuse me, because I might not understand the process well enough, but isn't the bill about the actual legislative um, requirements and wouldn't you put... Could not the one the bill or the legislation include some transition or, or could include transitional arrangements? Um, sorry, I think you're on mute. Apologies, it's it's actually muting and unmuting us without our touching anything. <laughs> So, um, no, it's the second bill that's really going to be dealing with that. Um, and that will also deal with the economic and consumer protections, as well as, as well, so the nitty gritty, a lot of the detail um, and the heart stuff is going to be in that second bill. And just one other question is, um, given how the submission is written and some of the comments, do, you, um, do officers consider that this is almost um, um, approval of the water reforms? From, from a Wellington okay. City Council perspective? No, Councillor Cabot, the, the, the um, proposed submission is simply addressing the bill. The decision on Three Waters reform has been made by the government and um, all we are doing um, within this report is um, helping you think about the key elements you, you may wish to comment on to influence the final shape of the legislation at this stage. Thanks, Councillor Cowart. Councillor Wolf. Um, yes, Your Worship. I, I've just got a question that that relates to our um, mana whenua um, representation, and, and I, I would really um, value having um, Liz Kelly's in, involvement so that perhaps we can ask her questions. It's um, I don't think it's outside the process either, um, because I think that um, um, our iwi represent, representation um, are able to sit around the table and actually have speaking rights. Um, so I'm yeah, just wondering um, if we can accommodate that at some stage. It possibly doesn't have to be now where, where we've got officers involved, um, but at, at, at some stage, I, I think that that would be um, well within the, the spirit and and um, in respect of um, the relationship that, that we have. And the, you know, the three waters... Um, is, yes, is, 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 Councillor, you're starting to verge into actually making a speech now. So... Um, yeah, look, OK. The, the, you get the um, point. Um, Liz has the is here and and has the right to speak and um, and I would encourage her to take that opportunity to do so um, okay. rather than we shouldn't really be asking effectively asking that's us right, our, we mem our own members questions that's um, right Councillor Day yeah I just wanted to say I don't think it's um, fair to take a cross examining approach where we're asking questions I think I'd be happy to hear um, yeah uh, Liz and Nancy Tour's perspective but I wouldn't want my colleagues to be drilling um, Liz with questions no, no, that's I, not I, what this is about. That quite, wasn't my quite, intention, quite so. Joe. Quite so. That wasn't yeah. my intention. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I don't see any more questions. That that is good. So, councillors, I'm going to move the um, move the report uh, at least pro forma um, because there's as well, considerable aspects of it I'm not not particularly keen on. Um, the first thing is to say that um, <coughs> let's just remind ourselves this is a submission, although. Um, and over time, we've made uh, a number of submissions on various aspects of water reform. It would be fair to say that our, our um, feedback has genuinely been, genuinely been fairly nuanced. And that's probably because as a council, we have quite a, uh, a diverse set of views on what we like about the water reform or what we don't like about the water reform. Um, I think we, we all recognise that the government's water reforms are controversial. Um, there are people, as I said, who like and who don't like it. We also recognise the need for change. 
Um, in Wellington, of course, our water system has become a bit of a target for the media. If a pipe breaks in Wellington, it's front page news. If a pipe breaks in Porirua, it's Wellington Water's um, pipe. Uh, so that's always a delight to see those that kind of um, that kind of coverage. It was interesting. I had a quick look back and um, at the pre-election report uh, 20 in 2019. Uh, there wasn't a single um, a mention of problems with our water system. There was mention about uh, government's reforms, which were kind of like we didn't really know what they were going to be like, but we knew the government was looking at reforms. Uh, there was quite a bit of mention about uh, resilience and making sure we had um, uh, things like omoraro and water bladders and things of that nature. There was a bit about stormwater and flooding, which goes to particularly to Tawa, um, but that was it. So there was no real feeling that there was a problem with our water network. And of course, in this triennium, uh, about two months in, things started breaking. Now, for whatever reason, anyway, um, that's what's happened. And of course, it's become now a major issue. And that, of course, has added, I think, to the reasons people are thinking that there's a need for change. So I agree that there's a need for change, but I don't like the reforms that are currently proposed uh, for a multitude of reasons. First of those, it's, I, I think that the efficiency gains that are being suggested um, are well beyond credible. I've said that right from the start. I, I still think they're well beyond credible. And I don't think there's any recognition that there can be any efficiency gains from any other scale of, um, uh, of uh, new water service entities. I also find the constant quoting of Havelock North being not terribly re relevant to us as a region because we've had, as far as I'm aware, A grade drinking water quality for probably all of our lifetimes. We might waste a bit of it, um, but we've had A grade drinking water quality. We do have issues of course, with particularly with um, uh, water supply will become an issue um, and wastewater discharges into streams and the, the quality of our, some of our streams is, is definitely an issue as well. Um, I don't like that we've got uh, now compulsion in this, um, uh, this process where we started out, it was an opt-in uh, arrangement, then it became an opt-out arrangement, then it became a compulsory one. That doesn't land very well. Uh, I don't think that the, um, the shareholding arrangements that have been structured, they're interesting, but I don't think they're particularly meaningful in the way that you would usually expect a, um, a shareholding arrangement to be. And overall, I think that we're still struggling uh, in this legislation to try and find a way of landing local voices, as, as I believe, it should, and certainly as at the moment. It's certainly not going to be very easy to pick up a, a phone and, and talk to your local council about, about water uh, in the way that you can at the moment uh, in a meaningful way. Um, there's also a lot of loose ends. Uh, cross subsidy has always been a concern, and that is um, that's noted in the submission. Uh, how the proposed entities will raise their money? Um, it, well, we know that, for example, we don't have water meters at the moment in this in this area. That's something that the mayoral task force certainly said that we should be uh, looking to uh, uh, to discuss with our community. Um, and it appears quite likely that councils will be rating agencies on behalf of the water service entity at least for some time to come which is not particularly attractive from council perspective. Um, I know that the, the mayoral task force is going to come up. Um, you will find, uh, when I last read it, there were some things in there that the mayoral task force uh, supported. There are some things which it didn't support. There are some things which are relatively neutral. I think the balance is probably more uh, not in keeping than in keeping, but different people will read different things into that. Uh, and um, there are some other areas which I think don't particularly relate to the reform and don't aren't reasons to agree or disagree with the reform, but as um, Siobhan has said, it's very clear that there are some transition risks. We know that Wellington Water has um, lost a number of staff, we, and we don't want to see a lot of that continue, because we need whatever happens, we need to make sure that we've actually got the staff there, the contractors there, the consultants there, to continue to deliver um, water services, and we want to deliver more water services over the next uh, two years uh, than we have been in the past. Uh, and finally, of course, we need to make sure that we are um, we have this no worse off funding sorted out. So that's my views. Um, I'm moving it pro forma um, and um, looking to see one second. I know as far as I'm aware, there's one amendment. And I'd like to get that amendment on the table because that solves having, saves having multiple debates. But hopefully I don't have to say anything else. Oh, uh, Councillor Connor, you're second seconding? It. Cool. I'm happy do you to second it, Andy. Now, or do you wish to hold your... Hold I'll reserve my right. right. Okay, cool. Right. Um, Councillor Rush, I believe you have an amendment. You're on mute at the moment. I know, I know. I'm trying to find my cursor. Cool. Uh, yes, I do. Um, I, Haley, is that <clears throat> going up? I mean, um, it's had some modifications this morning or additions, I suppose, to 
address some of the concerns I think raised just by the mayor in regard to the submission. Um, some, I think, um, you know, we've been participating in a process which um, we've been hoping for certain outcomes. And I think it was the right thing to do was to collaborate with the government in, 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 in this journey. Um, but when you get to a point where the government's going in a different direction, it's time to stand up, I think. And this is what this submission, sorry, this amendment is intended to do. So paragraph two, to add some bullet points to reflect what I think uh, we've been saying for some time um, uh, uh, in regard to these reforms. I guess the controversial one will be the addition of four, which is to enter into or collaborate with the Communities for Local Democracy lobby group. Um, and I just want to focus on that um, in particular. I think that group has had uh, a bit of an unfair run, although perhaps caused by maybe some of its own members. But it is, without doubt, a significant group of influential councils, 1.4 million uh, residents. That doesn't include Auckland, who are also um, not in favour of these reforms in this current in the current shape. So uh, there is a significant number of uh, of New Zealanders or their councils, at least, who uh, would like to see improvements made. And the, the key one that this group is looking for is to is to make the um, to put the local uh, back into uh, into local voice. And I think that's been something that is consistent with the mayoral task force findings. We wanted to ensure that, uh, that whatever happened, uh, that we would have some sort of democratic accountability and an ability to influence. And that's, that's not really happening. I think there's been concerns um, with the way the government's gone about this. We, we had the opt-in, opt-out, which disappeared. Um, it turned out actually there were cabinet decisions that had been made um, before consultation. So I feel a little bit let down, I think, that we've been led on a, a bit of a garden path. And it is time, I think, for us to stand up to Wellingtonians. And the only way I could really think about it to do it was to, to join this group, uh, many of whom are, of, of their members are members of NTTC. I've had a good discussion with the Mayor of Napier, with uh, also Wayne Garpy uh, at Upper Hutt. And um, you know, they again uh, repeat, look, this is not about iwi or co-governance or anything like that. The, the, the guys in Hawke's Bay work regularly with Ngāti Ka and Nunu. Uh, a lot of why I actually started thinking along the lines, I had an interview with Craig Little, Mayor of Wairau, who, um, who said, we've been working with iwi for years and, uh, and they've got five iwi in Wairau and work successfully. And, and they're a bit concerned that this um, sort of structure is going to kind of change things. Uh, in a way that might not work. I've got a, a nice working relationship. We've just started with our MOU, and uh, I actually would really welcome to have a conversation with uh, our area on how would we want to do this as Wellingtonians um, to get uh, the best outcome. So um, I do think that conversation is yet to be had. So, I mean, this is... Um, Councillor, Councillor, I think about it? to wind up, please. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot. But So anyway, so... I think this group has clarified very clearly where it sits with the mana whenua uh, involvement. They uh, want to make very clear that these relationships are crucial, that they are involved, very committed to these partnerships. And of course, we are too. So I think we need to just put that to one side and look at this and go, well, are there aspects of this, um, these reforms which we are still unhappy with? How do, we, uh, how do we communicate that to the government in a meaningful way? And my sincere advocacy is that we joined this group of like-minded councils to uh, to reflect local voice. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Heidi, just to check, um, when you gave me that note, was that three minutes? Because I normally would give one extra, but I just wanted to check, uh, at least to a mover of a, uh, a motion anyway. That was three minutes, and he finished right on time for the extra minute. Oh, well, that's brilliant. Good. Okay, right. Uh, do you have a second, uh, Councillor Rush? Councillor Pannett was going to second. Yeah, I will, and just reserve my right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Right, so we've got a, a, uh, an amendment on the table. Um, so looking for speakers to the amendment. Councillor Matthews, I see. Uh, I would like to ask some questions of officers about the oh, Okay, amendment. yep, that's fine. Yep, okay. Yep, so yep. Well, we'll, keep, we'll try and keep them reasonably tight if we can. And Councillor Condi, is that questions too? Yep, cool. Okay, right. Yeah, so I, I'm just looking for some officer advice about any of these amendments, um, like an officer viewpoint, but in particular, I'm interested in the legality of us joining 
uh, communities for local democracy because it's now a matter of public record that that group is playing an active role in local body elections. So my understanding is that to fund them or even join them when they um, are openly going to be ranking and promoting certain candidates may not be a legitimate decision for the okay. council. Right, we've got the question. Um, I don't know whether that's one that's going to be able to be easily answered by, um, by staff in the room, but uh, give it a go. I can see Beth there too, so. Who's going to answer it for us? I'm happy to answer. Uh, sorry, go, Beth. working yep. out my screen. So um, our preliminary view, Councillor Matthews, is that it would, would not be unlawful. It would be unprincipled and given um, the resolutions that Council has already passed in relation to Three Waters and the Mayoral Task Force, we think it would look basically just very um, inappropriate and a little bit silly to um, to pass a resolution like this now, but we don't think it's unlawful. Okay, thank you. Can you, uh, can you hear us? Yes. Oh, good. Okay, great. Um, sorry, I was talking away before into thin air. Um, so in terms of uh, the amendments under two, uh, a re restatement of our concern that a strong local voice with democratic accountability is of, of utmost importance. We've made that point quite strongly in the submission um, already um, under the governance section, um, but can... Um, can make that stronger um, so we can support that. A statement that the scale of benefits model do not match up with other modelling done, um, that is um, a, a fact that the modelling doesn't match up with the modelling that um, the community to local democracy has done, um, but I'm not sure what the um, point is there given that um, we, so officers haven't actually looked at the modelling done by um, the local democracy group. Um, so uh, we're fairly ambivalent about that one, I think. Um, the original considerations, including the numbers of 1 to 13, um, this one um, I don't think we would support. You know, we're supportive of the uh, four-entity model um, that's got the scale um, and shown to have the scale through um, the modelling that was done by Scottish Water. Um, so I don't think we would support that one. Um, in terms of the shareholding structure, um, again, the shareholding structure that has been put in place is really just a protection against privatisation. That's the only um, thing that it will be used for. Um, when it talks about being reflected in financial contribution, there is no financial contribution envisaged um, from the shareholders um, under the legislation. So um, I'm not convinced that's relevant. Um, so probably wouldn't support that. Okay. Thank you. Um, Councillor Condi, Councillor Fitzsimons. Thank you. Um, this is probably a question for Karepa. Um, I would just like to know, um, given that um, we've got a representative from Ngāti Tōa here today, but we uh, don't have representatives from Taranaki Whānui, are you able to share any information you have about their views on um, related to any of these amendments? Uh, yes, it's uh, our understanding that um, Taranaki Whānui and Ngāti Tōa, although we can leave Liz to uh, respond to Ngāti Tōa, are um, of the view that um, they will support the reform and so they are not supportive of joining um, any alternatives, although they are open to having conversations about those if that's where um, the council goes. But their suggestion to us is that we stick to the reforms as their uri, uh, their their descendants will benefit more from the reform than not the reform. Thank you. Sorry, one one more follow-up okay, yep, question. Yep, Just wondering, yep. um, uh, regards to Takahere, um, you know, some councillors have made the comment that, you know, Takahere is an agreement that allows us to agree to disagree, um, which is certainly correct, but it's also an agreement that kind of um, establishes principles and values for our working relationship and working well together with Mana Whenua. And I just was wondering, do you think that um, the process for bringing this amendment on such short notice has kind of reflected those values that we've committed to in terms of working with Mana Whenua? Point of order, Your Worship, this is just a, an opportunist, opportunist way of trying to attack me personally. 
I brought the um, amendment at, at the time. What's the point of order? Sorry, sorry, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, I'll, I'll deal with the point of order. Um, Councillor, that's not actually a point of order. Um, so I, I have to rule against the point of order. Councillor Condi, you, you, I think you've asked the question. Um, I think you can you can deal with the you can deal with the the timing issues etc. in in debate, uh, folks. Um, so yep. uh, I would Karepa. still like to hear Karepa's response Karepa, about yes, what he indeed. thinks. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Thank you. Uh, it's uh, my view that any um, decisions that we make, we've engaged with mana whenua on that before we make the decision. And so therefore, um, if we've been unable to do that, we're probably um, not aligned entirely to the agreement that we have with mana whenua. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, kia ora, um, through you, um, Mayor, I would also like to add that I, I have personally had a direct message from the Chair of um, Port Nick, um, Kata Pukitapu Dentist this morning to say, just for clarity, we do not support the Communities for Democracy co-papa. Okay, well, that's helpful. Thank you. Uh, Councillor uh, Fitzsimons and then Councillor Calvert, and then I'm going to I'm going to um, knock uh, questions on the head because I think we've probably had enough uh, after that. <laughs> I didn't have a question. Oh, good. Okay, cool. Right, Councillor Calvert. Um, thank you. So um, th there seems to be some concerns raised about the amount of time from the amendment and knowing, noting that we've only got the papers late Thursday, last Thursday, and being able to talk with people. Is it appropriate that we, I, I mean, I know this submission's got to be in by a certain time, but is it a you know, is it appropriate to make a decision on this now if if there needs to be further um, discussion with um, um, all stakeholders? Uh, Councillor Calvert, the submission is due on the 22nd of July. Um, that's why we've compressed this and had the presentation last week, followed by the paper um, squeezed into this meeting. Right. So there's there's no real opportunity to um, have. Yeah. You know, so we, we, uh, yeah. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. No, we deal we deal with it today, and and we move on. Councillor Panada, I did say no further questions. Sorry, can I, I was just following on from Councillor Calvert's because I was trying to trying to be constructive. I just wonder, um, and I said this to Councillor Rush, if we could just agree the submission, but um, delegate to yourself and the chair and deputy chair of the infrastructure committee to work on it more before the 27th of July, because I really do feel it's quite limited as a submission, given what we usually do. Councillor Rush, and reading, I don't know, it's up to you reading the room in terms of the um, uh, the C4LD, but um, you can, you're entitled to keep it there, but you're also entitled to pull it if you want to, with the leave of the meeting, if that's the bit you want to, and we can leave the rest in there, just to, to obviate some of the debate. Your call. Sorry, I'm, I'm a bit confused. No. So was I was it? just asking whether you wanted to whether you wanted to persist with the MOU um, on C4LD, or you want. To, or if you do, that's fine. You've got the perfect right to do that. Uh, if, or if you wanted to uh, uh, reduce what will obviously be some debate around it, um, whether you want to do that, up to you. Yeah, I think we should. We should okay, cool. That. Okay, right. Okay, so we're going to debate. Um, Councillor Fitzsimons, that's you for debate, is it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Right, and then Councillor Matthews. And if we can be, if we can be pretty, um, this is a, this is a submission. If we can be pretty um, um, short and to the point, we'd be great. Okay, well, I just want to reflect on some comments you made, Mayor Foster, where you talked about Havelock North not being relevant and us having A grade drinking water. And I want to remind you that we don't have A grade drinking water. We haven't had fluoride in our water for quite some time. It's a major public policy failure and an ongoing scandal. There are serious public health risks from our failure to fluoridate our water. And I cannot believe that you can turn up to a meeting and say we've had A grade drinking water for some time. Dentists in Wellington are noticing the lack of fluoride that children have had and the quality of their teeth. We've already failed. And I also want to pick up on your comments that you can't pick up your phone and talk to a councillor about water. I have lots of people picking up their phone and emailing me about um, water. Councillor, I will um, raise a point of order against you in terms of misrepresentation. My point was under the under the WEC model, it would be much more difficult. I, I appreciate that, but you've said that it would be much more difficult. And I'm saying that I do have lots of people ringing me now, but they pick up my phone to complain about the fact that the pipes are breaking and that reform for those people can't come quickly enough. I um, cannot appreciate, I, I, I can appreciate the concerns that people have raised, but at the first instance, you raise concerns about community voice. 
Well, the government responded to those concerns and brought in a whole new basis for communities to have a say. You then you said you wanted to protect against, some people said they wanted to protect against privatisation. The government responded to that by introducing the, um, the shareholding basis. It feels to me like you're just opposed to these. People are opposed to these reforms for the sake of it and because of they want to uh, politically attack the government. I want to comment on the fact that this government, and I hope that I would be better under a national government, I hope that I would see reform of this nature for what it is, which is a brave attempt to fix years of underinvestment and failure by central by local government to properly invest in water infrastructure. We have seen the um, 500,000 New Zealanders last year had to boil their water because of faecal contamination. People died in Havelock North. Wellingtonians don't have fluoride. Pipes are bursting all over our city. And some people want to defer involvement in these reforms, go with another group of quite small provincial councils instead of taking the good steps that have been made in response to concerns made by local government and getting on with urgent reform. Wellington City Council should not join a splinter group. We should continue to engage constructively with the government and see the water reforms for what they are, which is an excellent opportunity to invest in the future of our water infrastructure after local government has failed for decades to do so. Councillor, um, so hang on, I've just lost the screen that I need. I think it's me. Who's next? Councillor Matthews, sorry. <laughs> it's, when, it's when you're trying to put something else up on the screen, you go, no, who is next? <laughs> okay, <laughs> Councillor Matthews, then Liz, and then, and then Councillor Conti. Uh, yeah, kia ora koutou. I'll speak very briefly um, just to say thank officers for their work on the submission. I support it as Russian. Um, I won't be supporting these amendments. Um, I find them a little bit of a strange place to put the kind of membership of this group because it is a submission to government and that we're discussing. And so to sort of, um, to, to, to then kind of chuck in an opportunistic joining of this group, which we've already kind of discussed a few times. <laughs> and many of us are like, no thanks. Um, and I, you know, I don't, uh, Councillor Rush, I understand that, you know, you've been talking <coughs> with these, people and that um, you feel some affinity for the viewpoints um, on the reforms. But I think you can be anti-water reform or want a different water reform without joining this group. And the the concerns, you know, that, as I alluded to in questions, that um, this group intends to be an active participant in local government elections um, in an inappropriate way, I think, is, you know, for us to join. Um, and, you know, I don't think, uh, it's great that Liz is going to speak, um, and, but, you know, I don't think these concerns from mana whenua have it all gone away. And, you know, I would see um, that the damage to relationships, but also, you know, there is a bit of uh, redneck factions in this group, which I personally don't want our council, and especially with the very good work that we've done, to improve um, relationships in this area to, um, to be associated with. And I note that many other um, councils who had previously signed up are looking to exit um, this group because of those concerns that they are actually joining a broader group which is just against co-governance with Māori. And um, I don't think Wellingtonians actually would feel comfortable seeing us with, with this group and their concerns. And I think they wouldn't because they see firsthand the problems with our water infrastructure. And, you know, by and large, I think are pretty comfortable with someone else, anybody else taking on some responsibility. So yeah, I won't be supporting these. And, you know, I, I, I think this process could have been, you know, better. I don't, I don't think sort of the day before on such a serious issue, which is so dear, to Mana Whenua's heart, I think that um, it's a little bit unfortunate, but I will just be voting against them. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Matthews. Uh, Council, uh, Liz, Liz. So Liz, Liz, just so you all know, um, for, for members of the public, Liz, uh, as our Ngāti Tawa representative, has the right to speak, but not the right to vote at the council table. 
Oh, uh, thank you, uh, Mayor Foster, and kia ora koutou katoa. Um, thank you for this opportunity to, to speak, though, and particularly given that um, I, I actually wasn't aware that there was a hui this morning until Councillor Rush um, rang me yesterday and um, gave me a heads up of what he was doing and did I have a view. So I appreciate that um, um, that he did share that with me and did give me an opportunity to, to, to respond. And thank you for the councillors as well. So if it is helpful, um, because I do think that um, the, the submission that Taranaki Whanui ha has um, given to councillors that I see was circulated this morning, I believe that was that was helpful. And so if I could just um, give you some key observations of, of Mana Whenua's view, um, just for some clarity of where we sit, which I think you already know, but, but I'll do it anyway. Um, our key observations are that Ngāti Tor supports the three water reforms because their core purpose and focus is on ensuring the well-being of our peoples and the tile, the water that sustains us all. Um, so we, we don't think that shifting of asset ownership from one public entity to another is problematic, particularly given privatisation prevention measures and the local oversight arrangements that we've been given a heads up about. We see the delivery and maintenance of water infrastructure as a technical endeavour not a political or democratic issue needing a local voice. Any such need is accommodated in the reforms. Um, four, water, water um, infrastructure needs stable long-term planning and operations, plus enormous long-term funding, none of which are characteristics of local government with respect. Um, the reforms, while poorly handled and able to be refined, deal with all key issues to ensure the operations, funding, participation and focus remains on the well-being of the people and tile, the water. Essentially, if the reforms weren't in play, we'd still be stuck with arguing over rates, can't afford it, who's paying for it, etc. And... In, in closing, um, I'd just like to say that I support what uh, Taranaki Vanui have said, um, that there seems to be, well, there is a lot of conversations about the reforms and a lot of opposition about the reforms. There are no existing alternatives that provide the level, level of assurance for the long-term management of our three waters infrastructure than what is proposed right now through the reform, so I, I hope that um, I, I hope that sort of gives you an insight into what Nati Tours' position is, and I, I can circulate that for you to to reflect on a little bit as as you continue the debate and then go on to to the vote if that's helpful. Thank, thank you, Liz. Very very much appreciated, uh, Councillor Condi. Kia ora. thank you, Liz, and thanks for joining us this morning, especially to share that those um, that quarter with us. It's really appreciated. Um, I guess I want to start by saying, you know, I, I certainly won't be supporting um, any bid to join um, communities for local democracy, uh, primarily or at least significantly because our mana whenua partners do not support it, um, and it is a group that has come out against co-governance and has been um, opposed strongly by iwi. Uh, across the country, and partic most particularly in the South Island, um, where after the Dunedin City Council joined this group, um, we were very upset, and, and, and the Dunedin City Council subsequently reversed their decision and withdrew from the group. Um, I'd also just like to raise the issue that same thing happened in Queenstown, where um, the Queenstown Council joined this group, Communities for Local Democracy, and then um, subsequently withdrew. Um, you know, quoting from that article, one of the councillors who changed their minds and decided to withdraw said that he had seen multiple red flags in the group's behaviour and felt their negativity was for negativity's sake. Um, and, you know, that they, there's also was discussion there that a key issue about Queenstown's council's decision to withdraw from that group was driven by their relationship with Kaitahu, 
uh, and that mana whenua were not, um, you know, we're not happy with the, the council aligning with that group. Um, I also just kind of wanted to follow on with uh, Councillor Matthews' point about it's, it's $20,000 for um, a metro council to join um, Communities for Local Democracy, which would obviously be ratepayers' money. And there have been some concerns about, the, about how that money is being spent by this group. And I'll just say that there was, a, um, you know, Councillor Matthews raised the issue about potentially spending it in a way that would affect campaigns coming up. Um, in a media article on Business Desk, the president of local government New Zealand, Stuart Crosby, said it was, quote, highly unusual to use ratepayer money in this way so close to an election. Um, Dr. Dean Knight in the same article was quoted, and I'm just going to paraphrase him, but he was saying that indirectly backing particular candidates with ratepayers money would compromise local authorities' neutrality during um, elections. So there are some pretty serious um, people raising concerns about how this money is being spent and whether that's appropriate, which I um, have concerns with. And, and obviously, I think we haven't, um, you know, if we were to join this group today, we, I, we absolutely would not have lived up to uh, the principles and values we committed to in Takahere, which is that we would um, have you know, open conversations with mana whenua uh, in a really genuine way, which, which hasn't happened through this process. Um, moving on from the conversation about communities for local democracy, I'd just like to address- yeah, Councillor, I'm going to give you another minute. Yep, yeah, I'd just like to address the, the um, <clears throat> particular changes uh, to the submission, none of which I support. Um, you know, I do support greater local voice but I think we always have to be clear not to confuse that with local control. Local control is not compatible with balance sheet separation, according to international accounting standards and international credit rating agencies. Um, there actually is a great recommendation 40 in the Merrill Task Force Review that talked about with EWI key stakeholders in the wider community, we should develop processes for catchment governance groups and catchment plans, which I think is a great way to introduce local voice and is something that could happen through the new um, sub-regional advisory groups, which would be wonderful. Um, the the Merrill Task Force on Three Waters did not discuss the appropriate scale for these entities, which Councillor Rush, you um, acknowledged and agreed in an email exchange last night. So I don't think it's appropriate to, to suggest that the Merrill Task Force has a, had a view on that matter. Um, certainly my informal my informal view of with con uh, conversations right. with people C at that Councillor, time. Councillor, can I get you to wind up now, please? was that um, including Wellington Water and those uh, recommendations as a possible entity was essentially just a fallback position in case the reforms did not go through. It was not suggested that that was an equally good outcome. Um, so I'm particularly concerned by that by any comments in the um, submission that suggested that Merrill Task Force supported that point of thank, view. Thank you, Councillor. Much appreciated. And with that, I will go back to Councillor Rush for right of, oh, Councillor Panner, you just got in. Sorry, a little bit slow on the button today. But I'm not encouraging just, people, more, more people to speak. <laughs> I want to speak really briefly. Look, I'd like to thank officers uh, for their work on this, but I, I am really concerned about the brevity of it. Um, this is a very big and complex bill, and I think um, that we actually needed to provide a lot more analysis. Um, and I certainly don't need to be involved, but I thought it was a practical suggestion by offering... Um, the Mayor and the Chair and the Deputy Chair of the Infrastructure Committee to do some more work on it before the 22nd of July. Um, this issue of local voice has been at the centre of the concerns raised around these reforms and I think the submission needed to actually provide some decent analysis about how this was to be achieved. Um, I am quite clear that I do not support the general direction of this government and its centralisation attempts. Everything is being centralised. I do not agree with that. Um, and I've been uh, very clear about this. I am a decentralist. I think there should be more control at a local level. Um, and as part of that, as a, a country that has signed a treaty with Indigenous people, we must honour that. There is no excuse not to. But there are many ways of doing this. And when people say there are no alternatives, it always concerns me because, of course, there are alternatives. And in fact, this is for me, the legislation is a missed opportunity to actually talk about ownership um, by mana whenua, which would be amazing if we could actually honour Article 2 um, in particular in such a critical space. Um, 
and the politics, which we'll talk about also when we get to Let's Get Willie Moving, are critical too, because the government will be involved in all of this, and the government, central government, Councillor Fitzsimons, has also um, failed many times at a systemic level in many areas. Just finally, I want to um, say that I completely reject anyone or any organisation that engages in racist behaviour, um, because we have this treaty to honour and the involvement of mana whenua around the country is absolutely critical. Um, but I do believe in local voices, which is why I've been prepared to second this. And of course, having the ability to challenge people on their racism um, is an excellent opportunity. So thank you, Councillor Rush, for bringing this. And thank you to everyone for their contributions. I have come in this for. Thank you. Uh, we've got Councillor Day, Calvert and Deputy Mayor. Uh, kia ora koutou. Um, so I won't be supporting any of these amendments um, and I would like to um, just begin by thanking um, Liz Kelly for coming in um, at short notice to um, speak with us today and also I'd like to acknowledge um, Kara and Lee who have also reached out just to um, reassure me um, of the very strong position of um, Taranaki Whanui as well. Um, I think it's clear to it's important to start with the fact that there have been no alternatives um, proposed, and that there's sort of a disingenuous um, suggestion that uh, that there is some other magic solution that could um, suddenly appear. Uh, I think we need to be in no doubt that if we sign. Um, the um, Communities for Local Democracies um, pledge and, and join and put $20,000 of ratepayer money in, that we will um, quite rightly be in the position where mana whenua will be um, questioning our intentions with result to Takai Hiri. Um, and we will likely be in the same position that Queenstown and Dunedin and other councils are now finding themselves in where mana whenua are saying, um, hang on, um, this, this partnership um, excludes us and it does exclude mana whenua. They haven't been included in the communities for local democracies. Putting te reo Māori um, in their documentation doesn't mean that they've worked with mana whenua. Um, so I think a, a, um, a decision to support um, communities for local democracy would be a significant backward step in our relationship and partnership with mana whenua. Um, and I just want to say... Um, in response to Councillor Panet um, around the treaty, um, that mana whenua may not want to own the assets and they have actually had um, a lot of opportunity to, um, to participate through the process. So I think it's really important that we listen to mana whenua um, and that's actually our role as far as being good treaty partners is listening and they have um, had a lot of interaction with um, the three water reforms. Um, and I do think that by joining community um, for local democracy, um, we are doing a similar, we would be doing a similar thing that we saw with the um, anti-vax um, uh, protests where, you know, people were joining together with um, white supremacists. And I think we've got to be very careful that we don't just think, oh, well, we can be in there and we can stop, you know, this racist view. The, the fundamental um, part of it is, is that they, they, they really aren't comfortable with co-governance and you can put it under all sorts of other excuses, but we need to be brave and bold and see that this is a really important opportunity in front of us and we must listen to our mana whenua partners who have been very clear with us today. Kia ora. Kia ora, Councillor Day. Uh, Councillor Calvert. Thank you. Can I just clarify, are we just, we're just talking on the amendment? Look, if you can if you can do both, because I don't see that there'll be any any difference between the two. Okay. Um, look, um, I have a lot of empathy for um, um, Councillor Russia's um, view. In particular, we've we've had a bit of debate around the um, the coalition grouping, and I think this is born in particular out of there's been no vehicle for this council to actually come round the table, um, whether um, and with um, Manafanua in terms of what do we actually want to see for our region? Um, and I think that this in part is, is, and there are a number of different alternatives and I'm not talking about co-governance. Um, um, I think it's, it's unfair to blame local councillors for everything. If you think about the Ministry of Health is responsible for water, monitoring water quality. You know, that is a government agency. The um, officer of the Auditor General was responsible for monitoring water service standards. We are now going to see two new regulators in place for that, and I absolutely support that. And they really need to be up and running before we, um, we do anything else. 
um, um, because, you know, try to do everything in a big bang approach, albeit I know the water quality um, um, regulator is, is getting up and running now. But I think it's just a disaster for actually getting sure that we do make sure that these water reforms are fit for purpose. So, um, and we've never really asked our community. We, uh, you know, we have various um, people coming to speak with us and we've got a view, um, they've got views, but there's been no sort of formal way or mechanism of, of us hearing what Wellingtonians actually want. And I just draw your attention to the fact that um, nine out of 10 people in Wellington think aren't satisfied with our decision-making. So, um, and that, that's been borne out by those results and um, released last week. Um, so I will be, I will be supporting most of um, Councillor Russia's um, um, amendments. I think it's very unfair for, for local government to bear the whole brunt of this. Governments, successive governments have failed the country as well in, in, in terms of infrastructure. Um, um, investment and in terms of their regulators and their regulatory role in, involved in all of this. So we've got to be in this together to sort it out. But if we all we do is the only time we can have a say or actually get around the table is when we get papers on a Thursday night and up for public debate on a um, less than a week later and no opportunities to sit around the table with our iwi. Um, because if we keep going along on this way, we are not going to get the consensus that we need to go forward with taking most people with us. And I hope my colleagues also don't try and weaponize this, um, and um, weaponize individual views, because everybody has a view, and I think every, you know, and we need to um, enable that to happen, but not to weaponize people's personal views. Um, so that's it, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cowart, nice, nice and timing as well. Deputy Mayor. Hi, um, look, I can't, um, I can't speak for long on this, but I think it's always a mistake to say that there are no other solutions. What my feeling on this is we've never really had the proper space to discuss this. And I know when I tried to raise it for discussion in Councillor any time, I was told that we can't have a discussion behind closed doors, which has meant that all of our discussions such as they have been, have been quite limited. I do support co-governments, all my voting has been towards enabling iwi to have more of a voice, but I don't see that anything that we might decide today will actually preclude iwi continuing to have a voice as they rightly should in this. But I also don't necessarily believe that big is better. And I think we've actually seen some failings with our Wellington water model. And as, in a way, as it's got bigger, we've got less connected to it and less accountable for what it does, even though people still expect us to be accountable. <coughs> Council of Simons. Um, the fluoride failure, as you pointed out, is rightly something that's, um, you know, we, we are just aghast by in Wellington Water. <laughs> However, it doesn't necessarily mean, I do have to point this out, it doesn't necessarily mean our water quality failed because the fluoride isn't part of the water quality. It's an extra, um, which should have been there, but wasn't. And I think the fact that it criticises us for not knowing what's going on with Wellington Water just shows how we will lose control of what's going on in our in our own um, water infrastructure, which is really so vitally important. I, I think that it, this is a rather late measure, but it is a measure we can take to make sure we do have some more wholesome discussions and that we have a group with some power to ask questions of the government and actually demand some answers, which I feel we haven't been getting. So I probably will see, be supporting most of these amendments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't see anybody else. So, Councillor Rush, right of reply on the amendment. Well, thank you very much, colleagues, for a uh, an informative and respectful debate. Um, I don't. I won't. Now, I assume I've got three minutes, Your Worship. So, I'm not going to go through everybody. I'd just like to address um, the concerns raised by uh, Mr. Hunter and Liz as well. I mean. The, we all are looking for reforms and we're all looking for reforms that do well for our future generations. And, uh, and so um, we're all aligned in that walker, I suppose. Um, the question really is, well, what's the best way of doing it? And for a long time, I have been suggesting that actually this big all seeing all dancing um, area and, and entity is not the best way. And I'm just being consistent with that. It's not, not a new uh, position I've taken. 
I understand that there is iwi uh, support for the community for local democracies. I don't know that for sure, but the last time I spoke with, I think it was Mayor Wise um, or Mayor Little, that, that that was the case. It's not widespread uh, all, all across the, um, the, the, the whenua. Um, and what happened in, in South Island is, is something which I, I'm simply not privy to. But I do know, that, of course, that Christchurch is, uh, is part of this group, hardly... Um, you know, who are also uh, part of the Naitahu Rohi. Um, you know, and a whole range of different uh, groups. I simply don't know the identities or their politics, to be quite frank. And I didn't know that they were funding um, candidates. And I can assure you I will not be uh, taking any money from this group um, if I do choose to, to, to stand against. So I'm, I'm, I'm less um, convinced by our, our general counsel's message that this would be unprincipled. Um, this was is simply a uh, an opportunity uh, to have a debate because we haven't been able to have one. I tried to get it on the agenda, failed. My uh, my infrastructure committee meeting in June was uh, sorry in uh, May I think was cancelled. I was away anyway, so I've just brought it to a head. And I I, I do apologise for the lateness, I suppose. But as Councillor Calvert mentioned. It is simply the process. I did give as a call, as a heads up. I, I simply didn't have uh, the, the right sort of uh, contacts with Haranaki Whanui, but I did have a conversation with Mr Hunter this morning. And as always, I got good common sense and I would really enjoy a good conversation with Mr Modlink and Mr Hunter and others because every time I speak with our EWI leaders, I get comfort I get a genuine feeling of wanting to do good things for Wellington, and I want to get part of that. Um, but I don't think we're going to have that if we're also joining up with uh, the likes of north of Gisborne and Hawke's Bay and all the other places as well. So uh, that's simply my concern, uh, recognising rate power money is being expended, but we haven't done the survey, which would have cost an awful lot more, I believe, than the $20,000. I, again, I um, I refute any allegation that this is simply about racism. Councillor, I'll give you uh, that and, extra and minute. The idea... That extra minute. Thank you. Politics around, but uh, this is about trying to do the... Uh, ..some sort of discussion. ..discussed uh, when we approved continue to uh, endorse the with people um, message came up saying internet unstable did anybody else have from time to time happen to be in the council building is everybody else good right Okay, well, there'll be bits of council of uh, council rushes, um, <laughs> got error that I missed there at the end, but only only small bits, I think. Okay, councillors, um, does anybody want to take any bits separately? And I'm particularly asking that because uh, we'll clearly take the C4LD bit separately, um, and um, officers were okay with some parts and not so okay with other parts. Um, so, do people want to take bits separately of the amendment? Give you a moment to think. Have a think. So I'd like to take four separately, please. Yeah, we'll, we'll certainly do that. Was there any, any of the bullet points that anybody wanted to take separately? That's what I was asking. Can we take the um, first bullet point separately, please? Yes. I support okay. too, thank you. Sorry, Council Fern? I support Terry in that request. Okay, cool, we only need one, that's fine. That's, that's okay, that's good. Okay, so what we're gonna do, councillors, is we will, um, uh, go through the bullet points. I'll take one first and then the next three, because I think I haven't heard anybody want to separate those. Uh, um, then yeah. Yeah, we'll do I the say, delegate. Sorry, Councillor Calvert. Yeah, I just wondered whether it might be easy if you, um, the bullet points become A, B, C, D, just to, so that everybody's quite uh, Actually, if, if you, yes, I think that would be helpful. If you can do that, please, for us, Haiti. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> okay, right, okay, right. But I still don't have anybody who wishes to take uh, B, C, or D separately. No, okay, in which we'll, we'll do those as one, and then we'll do three, and then we'll do four. Okay, so 
voting first. Um, if you can vote uh, as you see fit um, for 2A. Voting on clause 2A, that's 12 votes and 13 votes in favour, one against, the one against being Councillor Conti. Thank you. Okay, then we'll go to 2B, C and D. Is it possible to go back to the screen for voting? Waiting on a vote from Councillor Cannon. That is it was. Heidi. Sorry, I think it might be freezing. So that's seven votes yes. in favour, seven again. So you've got the casting vote on clause 2B30. Okay, well, I, I, will, I will cast in favour of those. And that has carried. Okay, um, and then three. Uh, so on clause three, that's casting vote again, seven in favour, seven against. Given that somebody's going to have to do it, I'll cast in favour. So that has carried. Okay, and four. Voting on clause four, that's three votes in favour, 11 against. The three in favour, Deputy Mayor Free, Councillor Panett and Councillor Rush. Thank you. Uh, so that is the amendment. Now that takes us back to the substantive. Um, and I hopefully everybody has dealt with anything they needed to be dealt with because in which case I'll do a very brief right of reply. Um, so Councillor um, uh, Councillor Fitzsimons, um, and I think, uh, I think there was another comment along, along that line around the A-grade quality water. Um, you, you make a good point about fluoridation, um, although to the best of my understanding, and I, I was trying to find uh, what constitutes A-grade quality water and what doesn't, I don't think... Uh, so we will, we will check that one, but it still means that the... Uh, situation is not particularly relevant as the major driver for reform for Wellington City. The major issues for Wellington City are around uh, the, the level of investment that is needed across the board. Rush about um, adding um, adding to the submission. Uh, now, I probably look back in, in time and find quite a number of occasions when various councillors have added things which are rather tangential uh, to the substantive. Um, and seem to be quite comfortable in doing that, uh, even, even if some of us aren't. So um, I've got to defend Councillor Rush on that score. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, the comment you made about um, politically attacking the government, look, I hope that people aren't doing that. I hope that people are doing this simply on the basis of what they think is the right um, uh, solution in terms of water. And I can tell you that in the next debate, I'll be strongly supporting uh, some initiatives that have been um, uh, agreed to by, uh, by the government. Um, uh, there were a couple of comments. Uh, Liz, you made the comment, and I think uh, that was actually responded to by Councillor Pannett, but I will I will do that as well, about long, stable long-term planning. And actually, I think, to be frank, I think local government actually generally has that in spades over local, over central government. I, I think uh, in terms of, you know, we have to do long-term strategic plans. We've done those sort of things for years. 
Uh, and there's a generally a degree of stability. It doesn't mean everything has got right. Uh, it clearly, there's been long-term underinvestment in um, that wasn't picked up as an issue by this time. Uh, it hasn't been picked up by um, our auditors uh, at any stage. You know, and you kind of think that uh, if you have a big disparity between um, renewals and uh, depreciation, that that might have got picked up at some point, but, uh, but again, wasn't. Um, and so I think, um, I, don't, I don't think we should flagellate uh, local government too much uh, on that score. Uh, I do say that one of the bits which I do have concerns about, and it is raised in, this, in the submission, um, and, and it goes to stability of decision making, is the inclusion of a GPS. And we've seen what, what GPSs do to stability in transport planning. Um, and they see complete yo-yoing between um, different uh, administrations. And the danger is of the same thing happening here. Much less likely, I think, but there is still that danger. So I, I see the GPS as being a slightly dangerous, um, a dangerous arrangement uh, because it politicizes at a central, at a ministerial level, uh, decision making about um, uh, what is done with water and investment. Um, Councillor Pennant, I've responded there already. Uh, I've already voted accordingly. I'm not going to cover any of the things around C4LD because we've already voted on that. Uh, that's gone. Uh, and I voted uh, against that. I took on board the comments that people have made uh, about that. Um, and Councillor Calvert. No, I think you, I've already answered those issues. Answered those. Uh, look, thank you all. That's, that's all I needed to respond to. Um, and councillors, are you happy now? Given you, we've all recorded our votes effectively on the, uh, on the amendments. Are we happy to vote for them all as one this time round? I see we are. Good. Okay, let's do that. Sorry, I shook my head. Oh, you're shaking your head. Okay, yeah. right. Councillor David. I'm not going to support these, and I want it to be clear on the record that I'm not supporting these. Okay, uh, right. So do you want to do the same again as we did, as we just done? Okay, folks, yes, we'll, um, we will go, we'll go from the start then. Right. We'll do one. Voting on clause one carried unanimously. Thank you. We will do two A. Voting on clause 2A, 12 votes in favour, two against. The two against, Councillor Condi and Councillor Day. Thank you. Uh, we will do uh, 2 B, C and D. Voting on 2 B, C and D is eight votes in favour, six against. Six against, Councillor Condi, Councillor Fitzsimons, Councillor Foon, Matthews, O'Neill, and Paul. Um, Councillor Day, given that you particularly mentioned that, um, did you mean to do that? <laughs> right, I thought I'd rescue No, I hadn't actually clicked a button, so it mustn't have been cleared. Ah, uh, okay, right, okay, fine, that's cool. Okay, so we'll just adjust that accordingly. Um, uh, so that's as seven votes vote in again. favour, seven against, casting vote. Okay, well, I'll cast in favour again. So and, then th carried. and then three. Yeah, Foster, before we move on, can we actually vote on two, which is just to approve the oh, submission two, yes, and yes, set up? Good point, good point, Thank and because sometimes we miss the, yeah. the bit at the top end. Okay, we'll vote on two. Thank you. Can I just be clear, Councillor Panett, you haven't made a mistake there? In other words, you don't uh, want a submission. You don't want a submission yeah, sent at all. Definitely not. As you know, I oppose the reforms. Thank you. Uh, so voting on two, okay. 13 votes in favour, one against the one against Councillor Panner. Okay, and three. Voting on three, seven in favour, seven against. That's casting vote, Mayor Foster. 
So I will cast in favour. Cool. So those against, Councillors Condi, Dave, Simon, Spoon, Matthews, O'Neill and Paul. Thank you. Okay, councillors, that um, gets us to the end of that paper. Now, um, I said we would take a break at uh, around 11 um, so that we had our folks back from uh, uh, the Greater Wellington meeting. Um, so, councillors, uh, what I'm going to propose to do is we make, them, make the break a little bit longer and we resume at 12.15. So I'm going to move accordingly uh, now. Uh, I'd like a seconder, please. Thank you, Councillor Young. Um, Mayor, before you do that, can I just advise that um, the Let's Get Wellington Moving team are already on their way back to the office. The Regional Council has completed its oh, deliberations. That, that quickly. Okay, thank you. Okay, they're not going to be here in the next few minutes, are they? I, what I'm suggesting is you have a morning tea break um, for, you know, 15 or 20 minutes and they will be ready. Um, Barbara, I've, I've, no, I can't do that, so um, I do okay. need to take that break. Okay. I, oh, I see. Sorry. Um, I apologise, Mia. I, um, I overlooked that. Yep. Thank you. So, yes. Okay. Just waiting on a vote. Thank you. So that's 14 votes in favour, carried unanimously. Thank you, councillors, and we'll see you back at 12.15.
thank you for your kind forbearance. Heidi, have we got uh, Heidi, have we got everybody on online now who needs to be? Uh, we do have a quorum. Uh, how, how many councils have we got? C1. Well, by my count. Okay. Okay, we'll give it a, we'll give it another couple of minutes and then uh, and then start. And the LGW and team and officers. Um, am I going to hand over to you, Dave, to? Uh, no, me first, Mayor. All right, okay. we'll start with you, Barbara, then. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Kia ora koutou, uh, Mayor, Deputy Mayor and Councillors. Um, I know I don't have to tell you that this is a major milestone decision today and a big day for our city. Um, I want to quickly acknowledge the Let's Get Wellington Moving team who are online now and also our staff, particular Moana, who is sitting here next to me, who have been contributing to the program over the last uh, few years, ensuring that the city's voice is part of these critical discussions and that the direction you have set as our governing body is reflected in the decisions being made. And um, I've been reflecting recently, um, in recent years you have made a number of big decisions, including agreeing to notify a new district plan within the next few weeks, which aligns nicely with the decision you are um, debating today. Uh, both decisions are transformational for our city. Back in uh, 2019, and in fact, to be precise, because I remember it well, May 2019, an announcement was made which articulated a forward-thinking vision for our city and region, a vision to get ahead of the challenges facing Wellington, challenges which you had already proactively identified through our City Tomorrow planning for growth work and also in your declaration of a climate emergency. So today we're well on the way to making that vision a reality. We've not seen a program of this magnitude in our region before. Uh, and though I know uh, a lot of people want to see action sped up, and we hear that, this is not a quick fix or a band-aid. It's a long-term solution. And um, with my background in marathon, I, know, I often say the transformation of the city is a marathon, not a sprint. Um, and that's certainly the case here. It's going to take time, but it can be done. We're not the first city in the world to have trodden this path, but we can see from those who have gone before us all around the world that the benefits are substantial. A modern, livable, affordable city and region needs a modern transport system that can unlock urban development and help move more people with fewer cars, which of course is at the core of the vision for Let's Get Wellington Moving. So I don't underestimate the magnitude of the decision before you today. And um, I'd also like to thank you for the constructive manner in which you have um, handled amendments and also the Q&A process. Uh, let's get Wellington moving and the council officers are here to answer any further questions you may have. <clears throat> but before I hand over to Dave Brash, the um, ind independent chair of the board for Let's Get Wellington Moving, I want to welcome our new program director, Sarah Gardner. And also to very much thank Dave Dunlop for all his mahi as the acting program director over the last 18 months. It's actually been quite a long 18 months, isn't it, Dave? Dave has been instrumental in the impressive progress the program has made over his time at the helm. And I know, though, he'll say um, it's a team effort. A great team also needs a great leader, and that made a big difference. So thank you very much, Dave. Now over to you, um, Dave Brash. Unmute. Uh, everyone. Um, so thank you for uh, the opportunity to speak to you today. 
Um, the I, I too will just touch on the, the, the momentous nature of this milestone that we've got in front of us today. Um, we've moved over the last uh, year or more from a, a bunch of uh, transport projects that were for the highway and uh, MRT and for cycling to one integrated program in a partnership. And I want to just, and I was just reflecting on this in the way into work today, uh, that the power of that partnership, it's, it's hard work sometimes keeping it all together, but it is worth it. And today shows that. It's uh, the idea of having this common set of objectives amongst the, all the partners, including the three funding partners and the Mana Whenua. Um, uh, and the funding agreement at least provides a framework for us to talk about that hard stuff, the money. Um, and then today, uh, what you have in front of you is a set of recommendations that are the same recommendations that went to Cabinet, the same recommendations that went to uh, Greater Wellington this morning. Um, and having one integrated set of proposals uh, is, is in the end quite powerful. And, uh, and I've, uh, I've been scarred by what has gone before in other parts of the, the, the New Zealand and in, in Wellington where things haven't been integrated and connected up like this. So just reflecting on that partnership is, 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 uh, uh, should be treasured and uh, we're going to keep working on that because it needs to be cultivated right through uh, the, the next stage and into, into implementation. So in that spirit, um, you, uh, I'm going to hand over to the team, uh, you know, to be able to answer questions um, later on, but I do want to join um, Barbara and thank, thanking Dave in particular and the team for they've put in a huge amount of work over the last uh, months, but in particular the last few months, and then public engagement before Christmas, which was a huge effort as well, and of course welcoming uh, Sarah on board. So thank you. Thanks, um, Dave and Barbara. Um, now just um, take a little bit of your guidance here. We've had plenty of time for questions. We've had a huge amount of work that's gone into answering councillors' questions. So there shouldn't be, I think, anything substantive that anybody's got to deal with. I suspect, I suspect the only, the thing, only thing probably... Thing. I think the only thing probably will be to get the um, resolutions on the table and see if there are any questions about the resolutions. Would that be a, be a reasonable approach, um, Barbara and Dave? Just unmuting there. Uh, yes, that was a nod. Can you turn that up? Oh. Okay. Um, Councillor O'Neill, I see you have a hand up. Is that for a question? Yes. It was just if officers could reflect on whether any amendments were passed at Greater Wellington today. Ah, okay, yeah, that would be useful. I've had the heads up that it was a pretty straightforward process, but. Um, uh, and their, their um, uh, resolution is slightly less extensive than ours because, of course, they have a slightly different, um, uh, you know, framework that they're, they're working to in terms of their responsibilities. Barbara, um, do you want to cover that off as you did with me? Yeah, sure. So um, my understanding is they passed the three joint resolutions um, that we, the program, agreed to include, which clarified the role of the Mount Vic Tunnel, um, but that there were no other amendments. Okay. Right, well, um, what I, um, Heidi, can you get the um, substantive up? Um, Councillor Panett, you have a, a question too? Yes, yeah, sorry, Mayor Foster, sorry, just a very quick question. So just to be clear, I sent through a few words for 18, which the officers agreed to, and I just wanted to be clear if there were any other little amendments. Thank yeah, you. well, I'm, I'm advised that there are three. I think maybe, maybe um, Barbara, if what we can do is if you can take us through the amendments which have been added, um, uh, and I understand that you've ha you said there are some you're happy to take on board uh, and include. There are others which I might take on just um, include just for the sake of um, we can vote for or against them just for the sake of um, uh, efficiency. Um, so let's let's just walk our way through those, please, if we can. Um, possibly best to start from the top. Yes, Mayor, I'll ask Moana to um, work you through those. Sure, so um, we have the three recommendations that I just mentioned that went to Greater Wellington and ourselves that have been incorporated in the substantive, which is um, a, a slight amendment to recommendation one, um, more accurately describing the public transport to the east, 
a new recommendation that describes the intention of the existing and new tunnels through Mount Victoria, and a new recommendation which describes the importance of new dedicated public transport lanes through Mount Victoria. So that was as a result of our discussion at the workshop yesterday. Councillor Condy has two um, amendments which we have agreed to, well, our city council officers have agreed to support as part of the substantive. Um, that is around, let me just find it, um, what's going to be considered in the IBC stage and noting uh, that future proofing the Mount Vic Tunnel for MRT will be part of the DBC scope. Uh, Councillor Calvert has suggested a number of amendments, um, one of which has officer support, but I believe she would like to move those uh, on her own, which is fine. And then Councillor Pannett has an amendment uh, to recommendation 18 around urban development, around affordable and public housing, which officers are happy to include as part of the substantive. Right, so if we go through those from the, so the first one, obviously there's the bus priority, is not going to be an issue. Keep going down. Okay, on, on 18, Sorry, stop on That's eighteen. Okay, and well, you were happy with that? Yep. Okay. And twenty-three to twenty-six. So twenty-three and twenty-four are the two joint amendments that went to Greater Wellington and ourselves, which the program was happy to um, accept as part of the substantive. And twenty-five and twenty-six, sorry, with Councillor Condy's uh, amendments, which City Council officers are happy to include as part of the substantive. Okay, because those would have been done regardless. Okay, yeah. now do we have it? So do we have any others? That's as far as we, as it runs. And then we it? have Councillor Calvert's amendments. Oh. Yeah, down here, which she is going to move. Okay, and you will give us some advice on that when she moves that. Yep. So the advice, the advice was provided in an attachment to the email you received. Right. Um, uh, we council officers do not support them apart from number twenty-seven, which we're happy to support. Okay. Cool. Okay, um, are there any questions, councillors, of the um, of the proposed amendments? Councillor Pannett. Sorry, could I just ask if officers had a problem with 28 and what the issue was there? 28, could you bring it up, Heidi? Oh, so the advice there was that we don't yet have the scope or the schedule of the DBC, and we don't want to uh, create another additional reporting requirement. Of course, we will intend to report back regularly as we always have. The other thing is that we won't have a lot of information in terms of the reporting back by the end of the year on the DBC. We won't have a lot of new information because uh, it will only just be starting uh, or have started, but of course the program would be looking to brief the new council on the broader program in general, and that could be at the end of this year or the beginning of next year. So um, no issue with the intent of it, just that we don't want to create an extra overlay of reporting that we don't believe is needed, particularly when we don't know the scope or the um, schedule of the DBC yet. So I'm just the, wondering, could okay. that then be maybe, maybe amended if the movers prepared to just, just to say that there will be some report back kind of process, just to give that assurance? So that seems like a fair enough compromise of some sort. I'm going to, I was uh, going to ask Councillor Cal Councillor Cal Cal exactly that. Councillor mm -hmm. Cal 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 would you be happy to, to just amend that to something on the order of um, uh, to report back regularly against progress milestones? Um, yeah, but I, I um, sorry, I just, I did expect one back before the end of the year because there's a lot of concern about the actual cost of doing this business casework. And it seems that we're writing a blank check without any sort of formal accountability um, back to council. So this is what, you know, I'm trying to sort of find a way that there's some formal reporting back and not just to the, um, the governance reference group. I don't know if anyone from Let's Get Willing to Moving wants to comment. Oh, it's far from, oh, far from a blank check. Um, certainly not not that. Um, we're going through a scoping exercise um, currently, um, <clears throat> and that obviously seeks to take on board um, the recommendations that we've um, had um, and been approved by our 
our Let's Go Wellington moving board, but will obviously take on board any um, amendments that come in um, through this process. Um, so I see no reason why they can't be reporting back in updates. Um, the, the, the challenge is obviously fitting around the election cycle. Um, and just uh, that was the whole reason for the um, a proposal around uh, the delegation to the CE to sign off the um, indicative business case. Um, and also the fact that we go through multiple rounds of, of essentially agreeing the same thing, um, which we've encountered on earlier business cases through this process. So that's and that was the rationale for the approach that was taken. Um, but I see, I mean, I would have to clarify um, with the rest of the team, but um, I see no reason why there couldn't be a reporting back um, update process, which we would do as a matter of course, as we have done effectively throughout um, uh, the last um, certainly 18 months. Um, we've been providing. Treaty, Treaty, Mayor, Treaty Mayor, I think the important thing is that we take a consistent approach to reporting to two councils. We have three partners, two of the Homer councils, um, and the program itself reports through the board. And then members of the board are certainly accountable to their respective governing bodies to ensure an appropriate uh, flow of information, which we can assure you um, will be um, our focus. I mute myself. Um, Councillor Calvert, I think you're getting advice which sort of suggests that maybe some reframing of the words might to be a bit more flexible might be helpful, but up to you um, as to whether it's going to be likely to pass or not. Okay, I'll give it some. I'll give it some thought. Because okay, when, when, when we get to you moving the amendment. Okay. Yep. Cool. Are there any other questions? I see, uh, Deputy Mayor. Yeah. Um. So just to be really a hundred percent clear, um, apart from Councillor's Amendment Twenty Eight, officers are comfortable with the other things that have been suggested. Um. Yes. Oh, so we, we, apart from number 28, but um, a number of Councillor Calvert's, we does not have officer support apart from 27. Oh, I see. There are more. Okay. Yeah, oh, so I there are more. There are three others apart from 27 and 28. I think if you could um, explain the reasons that you're not comfortable with the um, uh, 3A, <coughs> the amendment 3A and the um, and 4A will probably be useful to people, I think. Sure, I'll, ha I'll actually hand over to the program to answer um, 3A and 4A. Um, in terms of 10A, um, the reasons that we've given, as I've said, you've, you've got this document with our reasons in it, but I appreciate you probably no time to look at it, um, is that the, the reason for this particular amendment is around the timing of the election, um, so that we can continue to progress this work uh, without the, the um, timing of the election and the potential changes that might happen getting in the way of that. Also, um, you know, we've looked at this from a legal perspective and it's entirely consistent with the council's position uh, that the chief executive executes decisions of council. Um, I'd reiterate that you are making the big decisions today. The signing off of the IBC is not the big decision. The big decisions are before you today. Chief executive will simply be actioning uh, those decisions and that's very much in line with the split between the strategy and operational governance between uh, the elected members and the organisation. Um, is there someone, Adam, are you there to maybe talk about 3A and 4A? Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I can probably talk. Oh, thanks, Dave. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, in terms of um, 3A, it's already covered. Um, if you actually read the in the note in, in the re original recommendation, um, it notes that um, ultimately um, we will be um, considering um, option um, to, well, we'll be considering BRT, which in, in, in relation is actually um, option two. Um, <clears throat> as for 4A, um, again, um, ultimately, you know, the intent of what those um, conditions relate to is, is all um, reliant on getting those outcomes. So it relates to option one, being reliant on getting those outcomes and, and obviously trying to um, deal with those matters. Um, so I don't see the need for it and I don't believe it's necessary. However, I'm keen to hear uh, if Councillor Calvert's um, view on that and position on that. Um, and I think that's that's it in relation to the two that you wanted clarification on from, from an office perspective. Dave, as it was explained to me, um... There's a slight distinction between um, the full option two 
and taking BRT as a backup mode to option one. But I wasn't quite clear on what that is. Did you want clarification from well, us? Well, I, I, I think I think that goes to Councillor Calvert's proposed amendment. Yeah. And why and why I got the impression that there wasn't a well there wasn't comfort from um, management about that. Mary, Mary, have you asked a question of Dave? Of Dave. Yes. yes. Well, that was a question. It was Barbara. You explained to me that, Apologies. Um, uh, earlier that um, you weren't that, that you weren't comfortable with that because it sort of meant more work on a full sort of a fuller extent of option two than um, simply having the backup for uh, BRT being the backup for um, for LRT. So, could you just explain why that's an issue? Well, we don't we don't want lots of extra work being done that doesn't need to be done if you can keep it to alive in a different way. I, I think it's very important that the balance in the decision we're recommending is that the primary focus is on option one, but the backup of option two, most of the work um, will be focused on uh, option one, but as we develop the uh, de a detailed understanding of all of the aspects of option one, um, that will lead to a better understanding of um, option one and therefore the um, the potential of op option two as the backup. My recommendation would be that we try as much as possible to maintain consistency between the decision you make today and the decision that the Greater Wellington Regional Council and the Crown have made. Okay. Um, Deputy Mayor, have you got any other questions? Yeah, I guess um, this has brought up for me again um, the confusion potentially between what we would be talking about option one doesn't stack up. It is, are we talking about actually doing BRT in the east or bus priority in the east? And I don't think we are clear, and that does bother me a little bit. So I think we are clear. Oh, sorry, go, Dave, if you're back online. Yeah, I mean, it, it's very clear. So obviously the focus of the investigation will be around um, LRT um, to the south, um, and then the reason behind the BRT investigation is is because if if um, LRT does not stack up, we will look at firstly the southern corridor, and then what if there is um, a affordability and, and achieves the outcomes that we want to achieve from the program, and um, then obviously it could potentially extend um, through to the east. Um, uh, assuming all once all that investigation un is undertaken in the BBC phase. Does that uh, clarify that point? So ultimately, um, we uh, uh, that is a DBC activity because it's been added into that DBC scope now. Yeah, we did discuss that if we wanted to get on early with improvements to the east, it would be good to completely understand what those improvements might be and not have it as a mix of cost, potentially bus priority and potentially bus rapid transit. So and, I, I think yeah. there is still an issue there. And I don't agree what's clear. The the issue relates to the fact that we're keeping it open, I think is the is the point. Um because obviously under an LRT option, uh, it, there is no doubt in the, the matter because of affordability. Um it, it ultimately is a is an enhanced bus or bus priority as we've discussed, um a, a provision through to the east. Um however. Um, under a, a, if we um, do a, a BRT solution um, and we find that there is um, a, the, the we get the benefits from the south um, and, and then we um, deem that there is um, a, it meets the objectives to also take BRT to the um, to the east um, then we would obviously um, be able to achieve that and that will happen in the detailed business case phase and that'll be part of that investigation that we are allowing for in the scope. Could you speak up, Sarah? Sorry, we can't hear you. Um, oh, that's good. Um, can, can I just ask again about Officer Comfort? We've ticked off um, of, um, Councillor Calvert's amendments, but the ones that the Mayor's moving as part of the substantive, is there comfort from Officer Reading with that? I just want to double check. Yes, absolutely. Good. Thank you. That's it from me. Thank you. I'm myself. Councillor Coddy. 
Thank you. Um, I guess I'd like officer advice on 3A, because I guess my concern is by adding that in option two at that point into that text, it makes it seem my concern is that we would be making a substantively different decision from our partners at Greater Wellington um, and at NZTA and, you know, the government. Um, so that, I guess that, can I hear about that? Because I understand kind of BRT is, is on the table, but it's, but this amendment seems to go further than that and say it, it's one of the preferred options, which I think would be different than what has been decided at other councils. Councillor Condi, to be unequivocal, um, that's what I was trying to say before, but I will say it much more clearly. Um, we do not support the wording as it's being put forward here for that very reason. There needs to be clarity about the preferred option, but also an understanding that the DBC phase will enable us to consider the backup option, um, which makes good sense because that's what the detailed business case stage is all about, is uh, interrogating the detail. But it, it, we don't, do not wish to uh, confuse matters by appearing um, to make a, a different decision to the other two partners. Thank you. And just to kind of over belabor the point, but um, is the reason that we're supporting, for example, um, the changes to 18, 23, 25 and 26, um, are because they don't substantively change the decision. They're just sort of asking for or clarifying, asking for more analysis or clarifying matters. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Calvert. Uh, I just want to go back to officers' comments about the um, um, the new recommendation I was putting up in terms of reporting back. And, and really what their what their advice is that they would would be acceptable to them because really I'm, what I'm trying to do is to get officers to report back to us on a regular basis. So what in this and, and also for it to be transparent publicly as well. So what in this um, in terms of changing adjusting any of the wording, what would be acceptable to officers? Um. Kia ora, uh, Councillor Calvert. Um, the words you use then are, are pretty good, and we suggest it could be something like um, uh, the program will regu regularly brief uh, its partners, including Wellington City Council, on a regular basis and ensure that the council is kept um, up to date on key milestones. Something along those lines. And, and so from that, do we... Um, does that mean the council as a or the councils as a whole? Because I, I, I wouldn't like us to yes. be say, well, we are coming to the GRG and that's sufficient. Yes, I think what, what we would certainly take the council as meaning yeah. the council as a whole. Okay, all right, um, and um, and that would be reporting back um, publicly because I, I want to make sure that what what we're told in that context is public uh, information. I, I think the one reservation there is sometimes we may need to brief yeah. you on commercially sensitive issues or legally sensitive issues, yeah. but we would take our normal approach, the, the approach Wellington City Council has been generally taking, which is a high level of transparency. Okay, all right. Um, thank you. I just need to think about some wording. Yeah. That's all. Thanks, Mayor. Okay, well, that's all the questions. Uh, so that then falls to me to introduce the paper. Officers, you're all good now? An LGWM team? We're good? Right. Okay. Look, um, I'm going to start. I'm delighted to be here. Um, this is a, it's a real milestone for uh, our city. Um, and I just want to start, as Barbara did, by just saying thank you to, uh, to all our officers, uh, to all of the LGM team. Uh, and I, I do want to, it's, it's always dangerous to sing, uh, single anybody out, but I do want particularly to um, single out Dave Dunlop uh, for the, the incredible work that you've done and the way in which you've done it, that sort of calm, uh, measured and very responsive way that you've done that. Um, and I'll just reflect back that um, 18 months or so ago, uh, we had to go through, we'd just gone through a health check. Uh, things were clearly not quite, uh, not quite right. Uh, and uh, in the last 18 months, Let's Get Wellington Moving has often been sort of panned for, you know, what's happening and is Let's Get Wellington Moving actually moving? And the answer is absolutely it is. And over that 18 months, quite an extraordinary amount of progress has been made. We know we've got a, a large number of 
smaller projects which are um, on the go. And some of those smaller projects aren't exactly small. In the in the uh, the Hutt Road, Thorn and Key uh, work that's being done, the Golden Mile work that's being done, uh, and then of course there's the uh, the city streets that we've we've approved. Uh, there's various cycleway projects which sort of link in with the Let's Get Wellington Moving um, project as well. Um, and, and we've actually got physical work, which is about to start, um, well, with some small pedestrian works which are already underway. And then uh, this week, we've had the notification of the traffic resolutions for the roundabout day of Tearkey. So things are on the move. And this is the big part, of course, the big transformational part of the, um, of the program. Um, I was delighted to be uh, with the, uh, the ministers on uh, last week when we, when we had the announcement. Um, <clears throat> and to be able to stand together and support what they um, what the cabinet has, has proposed, and I think it's a very good solution because it gives us it gives us certainty about um, a tunnel. It doesn't give us certainty about what the alignment of the tunnel is, but it gives us certainty about a tunnel. It gives us certainty about what is, I think, a very elegant uh, and beautiful uh, arrangement around the basin reserve to um, to address uh, that congestion and, and conflict point. And it gives us certainty about the route uh, for mass for mass transit. It doesn't yet give us certainty about the um, the mode that's going to travel on that route, but it does give us certainty about the route. And that allows a lot of that planning, that detailed planning work to be done. Now, there'll be some people who say, well, just get, us, get the shovels in the ground straight away. Um, most of the time, uh, when you build a house, you usually get the architect um, in the beginning rather than at the end. And that's what we're doing at the moment. This is a huge project um, and it does need design. So it'll need the geotech. It'll need the exact layout of, of where the road space is going to be, which properties need to be acquired. There's an immense amount of work uh, that still needs to be done, but that is what is what the details um, are all about. This is um, an integrated transport and urban, and urban development project. We've got to be very clear, this is not just an, a, a transport project. Uh, the, the mass transit relies on densification around it, because if you don't get the densification around it, you don't get the um, you, you don't get the, 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 a decent benefit cost ratio. You, you'd be wasting money in effect. So you've got to get um, the density around it. And likewise, the mass transit supports that density. If you've got a lot of people in that area, then they need to be able to move around um, in a way that provides the capacity for them to do that. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. So it is genuinely an integrated transport and urban development approach. So it's housing, it's urban renewal, and it's also about ensuring we have the lowest possible carbon future. And I think if you said, we don't want to do this, we want to do something completely different. In other words, that mass transit didn't work. Think about the way in which our city would then be laid out. And what it would mean is a lot more scattered development and inevitably a lot higher um, carbon emitting development. Um, and that's something I've been saying for quite some time. You might recall that I said that we, we need, and you look at the papers here, we need to drive as much as possible of the development in our city into that corridor. Because if we don't, it's not going to stack up. Uh, and so that's what we have to do. And that's why I've been saying, what, that's why I was quite comfortable taking some um, steps back with housing in some areas, because we actually need that housing here. And if somebody builds it in one place, they can't, the, the same person is not going to live in two places at once by and large. So that's, that's very much my thinking. Actually, the best thing we could do is to try and attract some of that more widely flung um, development around the region, which is going to be much, much uh, more carbon dependent. I think the other thing that comes through in the urban development space, and it's, it's something that I pitched uh, quite um, early on to the ministers of transport and housing, was that we can't just passively zone. So we can't just say, here's the district plan and wait for the market to do stuff. But what we need to do is we need to be active and we need to be pushing development. And you can see the recommendations around that, recommendations uh, particularly uh, 21, um, or 20, sorry, I should say, is clear about that. And we're doing some really, really good work with uh, Kang Or. In fact, um, Councillor Day and I were in a, a very good meeting yesterday with, uh, with KO, um, and uh, likewise had a, a good meeting at the Regional Leaders, Leaders Forum the other day with uh, a senior uh, member of the KO team. And so that's about us working together um, to, to create a structure uh, to be able to actively deliver a lot more um, housing. So what we need to be doing is then going out and engaging with communities along that corridor um, and talking about like, what does that development look like? Um, how do we do it in the best, what, best possible way? So I, I'm really, really uh, excited um, by doing that. Uh, and um, that, that probably is the, the bulk of um, what I wanted to say. Um, I have no doubt councillors will have a, uh, an interesting conversation, but um, I, what I appeal to you is 
this is a massive uh, investment for the city. Uh, we need to be working. There's a lot of detail still to be done in terms of the design. We've also got a fair bit of work still to do in the, in the funding space. Um, one of the things that is um, that I'm excited by, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> one of the things I'm excited by is, is that we've made progress on the funding tools as well. So if you go back to uh, when we, uh, two, year, two and a bit years ago, um, when we started, we were talking about congestion pricing as a tool. Uh, the, the previous government, um, that is the current government and its previous guys, I think you say, um, said they didn't want to, they didn't want to go anywhere near um, congestion pricing as a tool. And we've been saying, actually, you need to have that on the table. You need to have that on the table. And they're saying, well, maybe, maybe, maybe. Now, it is very, very clearly on the table now. Um, both uh, Councillor Blakely from the Regional Council and myself represented uh, the, the city and the region in, uh, in submitting to the Auckland Inquiry on congestion pricing. Um, and it's very clear that there's a significant support across all the political parties for that as well. So I think we'll see further progress on that, and that becomes a tool. I think, um, uh, Councillor Calvert, you were referring to um, earlier to concerns about um, uh, about parking levies, and I know that is a concern for quite a number of our building owners. And um, while we can't rule it out at this stage, I think there's a very strong preference that um, congestion pricing rather than parking levies is the tool that we would use for, for behaviour management uh, in that area. Uh, and the other thing I think to say in terms of funding is um, that will obviously have to be decided through the, uh, the LTP, major funding through the LTP uh, in 2024. Um, and I think there is further discussion uh, to be had about exactly how this funding um, all works together. And I was um, quite pleased to hear um, the Finance Minister um, on uh, at the announcement just indicate that there is work being done uh, to think about how mass transit in Wellington is funded in relation to mass transit in Auckland. And obviously, you know, we want something that looks pretty reasonably, um, reasonably similar uh, in terms of the, the way in which the, the costs us here. So councillors, milestone day, really excited to be here. Thank you all for all the work that has been done to get us to this point. Um, and I look forward to strong uh, endorsement from this council and for us then to be able to, to walk together as a partnership. We've got to be clear, this is not a city council project on our own. This is a partnership with the regional council, with the government. Um, and so to walk forward on our own to create what I think will be a really, really exciting, um, sustainable future for our city. Right, who is seconding for me? I can see uh, Deputy Mayor. Um, it is my absolute privilege to second this paper. Um, as we published here on the GRG. Sorry, uh, Sarah, you're coming and going just a little bit. Oh, that's a shame. Um, <clears throat> try that again. I was just going to say it's been a privilege to second the paper. It's been a privilege to actually be on the GRG along with um, Councillor Fondi and the Mayor and other people, of course, from. Regional Council from Wakatatari. It is really an exciting day. One of the things about Wellington, much as we love it, is it's very space constrained. So if our city is going to grow, we have to take, I think, this really big picture approach to working out how we can best maximise the space that we've got and connect the places where the population is going to grow, connect to the city, connect to the places people want to travel, people want to work, people want to play. Um, we, we do need to take this big, picture thinking and this big leap of faith if we're really going to let the city grow into the next stage of its development. And for me, it's been that we've stalled for a couple of generations and we've tinkered around the edges of Wellington's growth. And it is time to be really visionary and time to make a big investment in the city's future if we want to stay a vibrant and exciting um, place to be. Um, I'm really heartened that this is a picture for the whole city. Um, some people will feel that this is the big focus here is on the south and the east, and to some extent it is. But there's also, um, as part of the early work we're doing, a big work around bus priority up the whole Kororri route. Um, one of the first things to happen to in the east will be some work around bus lanes and bus priority. Um, and of course, we've already started making major improvements on the north-south corridor with things like the Hutt Road um, and Thornton Quay. So there's something here for everybody, and I think that's part of the beauty of a, of a fairly comprehensive package like this. It's an expensive package, but it needs to be because we're trying to make sure that every part of the city gets what it needs through this, through this work. Um, I, I think that, it is, as has been said, um, the work that we've done on our spatial plan, the, the draft, the district plan, we've finally approved, 
is very consistent with building the, the um, housing that we need along the north-south corridor. And to some extent, there'll be housing in other parts of the city too that will support some of the other initiatives that come with this package. It's a really exciting package. I'm pleased there haven't been too many amendments. Um, I, I'm pleased that it's gone through the um, cabinet phase, the regional council, and that we actually now have the um, the honour of rubber stamping it. And I look forward to a pretty much unanimous vote, which is where I hope we'll end up. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I'll go to Councillor Condi. I've got Councillor Condi, Fitzsimons, Foon, Young in that order. Thank you, Mayor Foster. Um, it is a really exciting day to have um, this, this decision finally coming in front of this council. And I just want to reflect on what the decision is that we're making and, and what's happening at this stage of an indicative business case. So there's really two things an indicative business case is for. It's so we can make a go, no go decision on this project. And I think when you look at at that, for me, it's definitely a go decision. Actually, all of the options stack up to make Johnsville better and clear, uh, Johnsville, make the whole city better. Um, <laughs> all of the options stack up to make the whole city better. And I think it's, um, you know, and option one in particular, we're looking at, we know that it's going to be hopefully about at least three and a half percent carbon reduction. That's probably quite conservative. Um, other cities have seen 10% carbon reductions based on similar projects. And we're going to see really um, significant housing benefits. So for me, it's definitely a go. Um, the other point of the IBC is to help us narrow the options that we're looking at so that as we go into develop design, which we know is really expensive, um, we're not developing too many different designs and we're being focused on um, what we think are the most likely. And that's what we're doing today. We are, um, you know, by choosing option one, we're looking at this as a, a preferred option. We are still going to look at um, bus rapid transit as a possible mode on that route, but we have kind of narrowed down. We pretty much said, um, you know, BRT to the east, probably not. That's something that we've kind of ruled out. And that makes sense to me because when we've looked at that, when you look at the housing estimates, you're talking about up to 26,000 houses on the southern corridor versus two and a half thousand houses on the eastern corridor. So I can understand why we've come to that decision that that's least likely. Um, I think we're also looking at essentially ruling out Taranaki Street alignment and saying that we definitely are preferring the Kent to Cambridge Street alignment, um, which is which um, is a useful decision for us to make to help narrow the focus for the future work. Um, I think choosing Kent and Cambridge over Taranaki Street um, is well supported. It's The street is wider, which means we can fit more different modes along it. It has better housing potential. Um, it's got better bus route alignment with the current bus routes. And importantly, it avoids going through Te Aro Pa, which our Mana Whenua partners have said is really important to them. The only downside that I can see in terms of going down Kent and Cambridge is the potential effects on the daylighting of the Waitangi stream that shares that corridor. Um, that project would have already been quite challenging due to the depth of the stream, which might be up to seven metres down under the road there. Um, and because some ground conditions in the area, but I am really pleased that further work will be looking at partial daylighting water sensitive design and landscaping and other projects like that that will help us acknowledge the location, the Māori and the mana of that stream, which I think is a really important thing. So I'm so pleased, um, looking forward to seeing that work as part of the DBC. Um, I think, you know, there are a few gaps at this stage in the analysis just due to the time constraints that the staff have been working on. And that's, for example, you know, we don't have a full BCR analysis for option three. Um, and that's really where that noting recommendation is just, just acknowledging that we're going to dot all those I's and cross all those T's before the IBC is finished and signed off, um, that all of those options will I'll have. give you another minute, councillor. Thank you. Um, and I just think it's also great to acknowledge, just to acknowledge that we will be looking at future proofing the Mount Buck Tunnel for MRT, um, because I think while it may not stack up right now, in 20 years, it might, 30 years, it might. Um, and I don't want people 30 years time thinking, oh no, if only they built that tunnel slightly differently. <laughs> Um, this would all be so much easier. So I think it's great um, to look forward uh, at, at those kind of potential um, changes that we might have in the future. So I just want to say, you know, thank you to all the staff who have worked really, really hard on this project. It's really exciting to get to this point. Um, and uh, I hope that we'll have lots of support moving forward today. Kia ora. Thank you, Councillor Condi. Uh, Councillor Fitzsimons. Yeah, thanks. And I want to start by acknowledging the work of staff as well um, in the programme and in all the councils. Um, it hasn't always felt good or felt like progress was being made before the health check. It sort of 
it felt like a car accident in slow motion. But since then, I've found a real confidence in the work that the program is doing. And I particularly want to acknowledge Moana Mackey, who has given a huge amount of her time and commitment to this program. But also what I really appreciate is she's a straight talker. She'll tell us very clearly whether she agrees or whether she doesn't and what the impact of a particular decision will be in a confident way. Um, and I really value that. And I think it's really important um, for, for us as counsellors involved in this quite complicated work with other agencies. I also want to thank the staff for their patience in explaining the mass rapid transit route to me on the bus trip that we did. I'm not a spatial thinker. I do not grasp these concepts easily. I've never really been able to keep in my head exactly where that would operate. And I was so grateful for the time and the incredible patience shown to me in explaining that. Um, and I guess I just want to reflect on the history of changes to transport in Wellington. It is fraught and it has cost us. We don't have the modern low carbon transport system that we need and that we enjoy when we travel overseas. I'm really thrilled to see Mass Rapid Transit prioritised. The Basin Reserve, which I love, is a big cricket fan, remaining in all its glory and much better walking and cycling. This will make life in our city better and is better for the planet. And I did want to reflect on the politics of stopping things, because for too long in Wellington, the politics of stopping things and resisting change have held transport back. I think we need to be realistic with residents and businesses that there will be significant disruption as this is built. We need to gain and keep their confidence and support as the plan is being implemented. And I guess on that note, I wanted to... Um, reflect on whether constant reporting to us as the Wellington City Council is useful. I've found the reporting to be very comprehensive, but my advice to future councils is to carefully consider major decisions, scrutinise them, and then get out of the way and let it be implemented. Because every time we have a report to us, it is disruptive and minority groups who don't support the work destabilise the work. That is expensive and it's time consuming. And I guess I just want to reflect that with a big programme like this, there will be good days and bad days. There will be good media stories and bad media stories, but the vision is sound. It's an historic day. It's an important occasion, and I'm really pleased to be able to support it. Um, mute myself. Uh, thank you, Councillor, for the time. <coughs> uh, Councillor Foon. Kia ora. Um, I can't believe I'm in the lucky seat today. I don't say that every day, but I am today. Um, and I also want to just do a big shout out to everyone that's had a part in um, the progress to get to where we are today. And I do want to thank the um, progress with Mana Whenua. It was really encouraging to have them on the line the other day to talk to us about how they've been involved with the decision making to get to this point. I also um, and want to thank, um, actually a little bit unlike Councillor Fitzsimons, <laughs> I want to thank those that did reach out at the time to save the basin, because that's why we are here now. And we've heard it with the St James as well. Those that put their hand up and said, let's not remove this have actually given us something that we really treasure now. So there's there's two sides to that story. So um, thank you for all your work to getting us here to where we are now, those in the Save the Basin movement. Um, I just also really want to reflect on how we on getting here today. And that is when we first heard the words that um, the Southern route might be the route, I was in absolute disbelief because like many of us thought that the route to the East would be into the airport was the way for any, any mass rapid transit to go. So I can't believe that this is where we've landed, but actually the evidence is there, so I can be, um, I can believe it. The other one is I really want to commend the process we went through that enabled low carbon mode shift and urban amenity to be part of the weightings that have got us to these decisions today. Um, I also just want to say that, um, um, we are seeing in other cities 
that the mix that we are getting here, so it's not just the mass rapid transit, but it's mi mixed with um, active transport modes like using bikes or walking have meant that there have been 10% uh, carbon emission reductions in other cities or and 30 up to two thirds using these other modes over private vehicles. So just to um, reaffirm, we are definitely heading in the right direction. I just want to talk about engagement. I am very, the concerns that I have are those in the South. This is going to be quite another level of what these comfortable, connected, I want to say even sleepy communities, this is going to be quite a big change for them. And I'm really comforted to hear that officers have got an engagement and communications plan underway because there are still many that are not up to speed with what is being proposed here. Um, I also want to say that Adelaide Road, um, I've, I've really condemned the way that Adelaide Road has lain, lain dormant, even though over 14 years ago with the Bell Report, we were told to get on with it. But actually what this has created is a blank canvas for us to really make the major, uh, it's now become an opportunity to uplift housing and to really make this a great, and, and so I'm urging everything and councillors and officers to make this the best place of choice to live in Wellington. And that we need to do that with all the amenity to support the transport and housing. It's not just those two. Um, and also, um, just want to say, I'm not overly convinced about the investment of over a billion dollars in a tunnel to the east when we are not seeing the who's um, the urban. Uh, Councillor, I've given, I've already given you 45 seconds extra, so you've got about another 15. So I will just flagging that. So I'm uh, looking forward to the next level of reporting, but I do think that we should be renaming this. Uh, um, not to let's get welly moving, but let's get welly awesome because it really is a project that will transform our city for the better. Thank you, Rhoda. Thank you, uh, Councillor yeah, uh, Councillor Young, and then Panet, and then Calvert. Okay, thank you. Well, I know that some people are going to support this, thinking, well, we'll take the money from the government and then we'll change the plan. Um, I cannot, in all conscience, support uh, that, and I certainly do believe Wellington needs a transport solution and we need some big ideas. But I also think we need reality. Um, and I think this a lot of this is a tooth fairy uh, prospect, such as light rail to Island Bay. And I just have to wonder about Island Bay. Why does it always have to be our transport laboratory for bright ideas? We gave it the cycle way and now we're doing this. So most people, except for light rail fundamentalists, realize we will end up with bus rapid transit. We should have done it years ago. The sooner, the better. Um, I'm really concerned about the costs. In Auckland, the original um, estimate for light rail was 2.1 billion. It's now tracking at 29.7 billion. And those are the kind of blow up figures we can possibly expect. Um, but we don't have a detailed business case yet. And I think it's very odd to be voting on an option when we don't have a detailed business case. Uh, let's get Wellington moving uh, states that it's half a million dollars per meter, yet that was uh, the Aris Tunnel cost $1 million a metre, and that was five years ago. So I just I just don't have confidence in the figures. And the paper states that the uh, chances of es cost escalation are high, and that doesn't take into account things like buying properties. At least the values are going down, even if their rates aren't. Um, so option one uh, is likely cost. It's been estimated as more like $10 billion, of which ratepayers will pay 40%. That's $18,000 per person in Wellington our rates will soar. It's been suggested by up to 38% a year. All I can say is, ouch. I remain implacably opposed to ripping the heart out of our golden mile, where there are already 57 empty premises. That's not the kind of blank canvas I want in our city. There are many who rely on cars, the elderly, families with young children, people with disabilities, and people are now heading to the hut for shopping and to go out for lunch. Uh, and to the suburbs for dinner, where they can park and they don't have to worry about their parking meters because we've put up the price of parking uh, or taking parks away. And I'm concerned about Thorndon Quay. Um, I, I think it's extraordinary. We had so many people who did not want a pedestrian crossing in Cobham Drive, but that's going ahead. No wonder we got 12% of um, 
residents thinking that we actually listen to them. And I'm dubious about the population projections uh, that don't consider the ramifications of COVID and working from home, which will possibly completely transform the shape of our city. And finally, no, not quite finally, or nearly finally, uh, I'm dubious about some of the rationale, walking, for example. So it says there's limited foot place, footpath space in the central city. Well, I walk in the central city almost every day, not today because we're on Zoom. I've never, ever had a problem with a crowded footpath. Uh, then they talk about the busy roads. Yep, sometimes. And long time wait times at crossings. That can easily be fixed with traffic light settings. So none of them, none of the reasons mention the really big reason, which is the biggest problem with walking in Wellington is our weather, the wind. So I am voting against this proposal. It's got the highest cost. It's got the highest embedded carbon. It's got the highest level of effects, for, especially for areas like Mount Victoria. In You've got about another, another 20 seconds. Newtown and the Basin Reserve. It's the least flexible, the least extendable, has the lowest resistance to disasters, and it relies on the delivery of high density housing. I will be voting against it. End. Thank you, Councillor Pennett. Kia ora, Mayor. Um, well, in contrast, I'd like to celebrate that finally, after decades and decades of activism, that we can now talk about what a livable city really looks like and what a sustainable city looks like, because we have fought tooth and nail for that. Um, and so my first thanks goes to those who even since the 60s have fought against motorways and for people-centered cities. Um, and I acknowledge my colleague in arms, Councillor Phone, because we have fought battles too on urban roading. And I'd like to um, acknowledge that it's 25 years, literally, since Campaign for a Better City sat down with Transit New Zealand and realised that we had nothing in common, that our visions for the city were so incompatible. They wanted roads and fast-moving traffic, and we wanted cities for people. Um, however, <clears throat> I want to give credit where credit is due. The government has moved, and the staff have done a great job. And I'd particularly like to thank people like David Dunlop and Moana Mackey for the great work that they've done to really bring this vision to life. Um, I've obviously had a problem uh, in voting today because I have long opposed new roading. So I, in good conscience, will not be supporting this particular option, even though I think there are many, many good things um, in the plan. Um, and I do still believe in a good bus and cycle network as the absolute minimum travel demand management. Um, but we obviously must get on with the mass rapid transit system, so I'm glad that work will proceed, irrespective of the option chosen. Um, I will be, I think, I just want to make a point that lots of progressive people said we should support option four, people who I respect a lot. I will be voting in favour of number six, um, primarily because I am a heritage advocate and because our mana whenua partners have said no, you can't build there, so I will adhere to that because that is really important. The Basin Reserve option is very problematic as someone who co-founded uh, Save the Basin. I don't really like it, so there will be further discussions to be had around here. I'd like to thank the officers for accommodating my small amendment around affordable and public housing. This is absolutely critical. This project will fail if we do not get that type of housing um, in good places, which is something I've advocated for for de decades. And I note, finally, two points. The Infrastructure Commission, I do like the fact, because this is a very green way of thinking, but given the scale of our carbon challenge facing New Zealand, that the most efficient use of infrastructure must be prioritised ahead of other investment in new infrastructure. Thank goodness someone is saying that. Last point, um, me and a few regional councillors worked really, really hard to make sure that we kept the um, public transport priority in that second tunnel. Thank you that we've got something in there which strengthens that. My final point to the national government, if you come in here, we will be waiting and there will be thousands of people that will take legal action to stop any more urban roading. There won't be just a few green activists. It will be members of the establishment, including QCs, and we will stop this. It is bad for the city. The, vision of a city which is car dominated must be put to rest. City for people are uh, the dominant mode. Thank you.
Thanks, Councillor Pennant. Uh, Councillor Calvert. Um, thank you, and I will be moving my amendments. Um, but um, first up, I just want to remind everyone, I think Councillor Young touched on it, that um, nine out of 10 Wellingtonians aren't happy with the decision making of this council. And um, and let this Let's Get Welly Moving program has been a big part of that. Um, I think where we've got to has been based on not the right decisions necessarily, but I was really pleased to see the government come out um, um, in a pragmatic way, um, going for one uh, for an option, but also asking for bus rap rapid transit to um, be part of the mix. And being quite clear that they saw um, a, um, a four lane tunnel, a new four lane tunnel under Mount Vic and, um, and the basin improvements. So if nothing else, we need to get on and start getting that underway. Um, and being clear about that. So really, I think we just need to, and, and I did think was that somebody made a comment about politics stopping things. Well, I think I guess again comes back to um, Wellingtonian satisfaction with our decision-making. You know, some of us actually speak up for most Wellingtonians and, um, and often that's, that's on the losing numbers side. But nevertheless, um, we, we've got to get progress. We've been going around in circles for six plus years and not achieving anything. So we can build a four lane a tunnel under Mount Vic and improve the traffic around the Basin Reserve, I'd be more than happy. I don't personally believe the numbers will stack up a, around um, light rail and certainly not down to um, Island Bay, but I'm assuming that the detailed business case will um, prove that point. Um, in terms of my amendments, um, um, 3A, I just wanted to make it clear that there is, while well, option one is seen as a preferred option, we are going to be looking at the bus rapid transit component. Government's made it clear that they want that looked at. And um, I can see no reason why this can't be added in for clarity um, because it is referred elsewhere. And as often we know we, with our noting, we put little bits and pieces in so officers don't lose sight of um, being clear. And again, number 4A is exactly the same. Um, 10A. I mean, this is approval of the final indicative business case, not the detailed business case. And if we can't sign off what we've just got now within the next couple of months by the mayor, I, I'd have to question why, why not? So um, I think um, this is a decision by a, the governing body. And so the mayor as a leader of the governing body should be part of, um, of, signing, of um, signing this document off. Um, it's our accountability. And that's where it should be. Um, um, number 27, which is new, is again, it's just ensuring that we are using the most up-to-date um, figures that we have. And we're, 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 we're planning things in a whole ecosystem of our region. And also that we are thinking about housing because I think all the way through, and even the papers, I am a little bit, I am quite a bit concerned that housing is not really, um, um, at the forefront. Um, I know the mayor um, commented on it at, at the introduction of the speech and that was good to hear, but really housing people is needs to be important, but housing people where they want to live as well. And, um, and also affordability, because this is a seven plus billion dollar um, program of work, but then we just heard Greater Wellington Regional Council sign off on a business case for another $7 billion worth of work on the rail network. And I'm not disputing about the viability or the need for that, but there is only so much in people's pockets. And we really do need to think about how all of this is affordable um, and are we trying to get to utopia? Um, and, but we can't actually get there because there's no money to pay for it. So, I mean, this needs to be at the forefront of any um, of the um, detailed business case. Um, and then the um, last amendment there is um, we're taking advice from officers and listening to colleagues. Um, this is again, um, really just making sure that they are reporting back to us, $120 million. Um, a third of that is actually program office costs. Um, and we need to be um, um, we need to be mindful of this money being spent. It's not a bottomless pit, and even in this document, it's, it's flagged that there may be more money required. So good governance requires us to, to monitor that 
um, and we should be doing that on a regular basis. So, um, you know, all of these are, are pretty much, there's nothing um, I think of any um, contentious nature and I look forward to your support. Thanks, Councillor Calvert. Um, Councillor Wolf, you're the, I've got no, I've got three hands on up there. Yeah. I'm just to check. Councillors um, Rush, Day, and Matthews, are you wishing to speak to the amendment? I'm going to speak to the amendment. Um, you were okay. Uh, there's the seconder. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I was going to go there in just a moment. So, so I've got Councillor Wolf, and then Day, and then Matthews on the amendment. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I suppose. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, uh, Councillor Rush, you're looking bemused. Um, were you wanting to speak on the amendment? Uh, um, go ahead as you were, Your Worship. That's fine. Okay, cool. Right, okay. Councillor Wolf. Um, thanks, Your Worship. And I won't speak for long. Um, I, I wholeheartedly support Councillor Calvert's um, amendments. Um, I came to council from a business background. I think this is good business. Um, ultimately, um, we're the people that are accountable in, in, the in a governance sense, um, we're, we're, we also um, have that responsibility um, to um, have the checks and balances there that, that are required. And I think that purely and simply Councillor Calvert has um, has her amendments um, on the table on, on that basis. And, and um, yeah, I wholeheartedly support them. Short and sweet, thank you. Um, Councillor Day. Uh, so I won't be supporting these amendments. Uh, the first couple, I think, are, um, are problematic given that we have other partners who are agreeing to um, the same things uh, today and at other times. And um, <coughs> we've, we've had a very clear indication of the way forward and I think this doesn't really fit with that. Um, I agree, um, recommendation 10 makes it tricky given we're going through an election. We don't want to slow this down. This is a, a massive project which we just need to um, get on with. And um, I also want to say that I agree with um, Councillor Fitzsimons that um, the reporting back um, process um, is important, but we need to not be seeing this as a way to delay or to slow down work. Um, and I would also just like to note that those councillors who oppose this um, and who are asking for reporting back really need to turn up to the reporting back in the briefing sessions. Um, we actually notice when when <laughs> when you're not there because things are sometimes calmer. And um, and so I think you know it's important that actually if you request these things that you do turn up and you ask the questions um, constructively at the time that it's happening. Um, I also want to address this nine out of 10 Wellingtonians um, not, not um, feeling supportive of the decision making process and that it's actually being used as a bit of a weapon against um, any decision making now which feels completely wrong and also the comments around that some of us speak up for Wellingtonians actually we were all elected and so we do speak for, for the people that elected us and that's the democratic process and that actually that comment there fails to acknowledge the fact that we're a city of diversity and that actually the um, what um, the community has delivered in this process is actually um, representative of this community. So there is actually a natural process in here which has settled and sometimes it's frustrating when you're not in that in the part of the process that is going in the direction that you like but there is a, a part of that which you also have to accept and um, I think it's, it's important to note that there are a very, very diverse group of, um, of views here, but actually there are a lot of people who really do want change. So um, I think it's it's not okay to just keep wielding this um, nine out of 10 um, Wellingtonians not being satisfied at us. I think there's a lot of reasons why that have happened. We have to stick to the decisions we've made. We've recently backtracked on another decision that was made and that makes it hard for people to understand where we're going. A lot of it's about consistency and the way that we communicate. And often the... Um, political narrative of this council is very confusing and actually it's the people who raise that who are actually often the most confusing to follow. Thank you Councillor Day. Uh, Councillor Matthews. Uh, yes it won't come as a shock that I won't be supporting these amendments either and um, particularly for that reason um, of you know us making our own path with which is a three-way partnership and actually we need to respect those partners and um, not kind of keep trying to pull this down or shift it um, 
you know, seeing the big picture, I think, and this is a momentum game, it's a long-term game, and, you know, I think that, um, you know, Councillor Fitzsimons points about sort of getting out of the way and letting the work happen um, are quite essential, and they've been essential to my approach to let's get balance moving. Um, and I guess, you know, um, coming back to Councillor Day's point about the, what, what a survey says, and, you know, the survey proves that I'm right and other people are wrong. I mean, I would also note that Greater Wellington have taken an hour on Let's Get Wellington Moving and voted, um, I, I understand, with no um, amendments and with only one vote against. So, you know, that might be a model of a sort of decision making process that people might have a bit support, more support of as well. Um, I uh, I also find comments about this, you know, ironically, the kind of comments about let's get Wellington moving moving around in circles and taking too long. If I had a dollar, Councillor Calvert, for every time you had moved an amendment to try and slow down let's get Wellington moving, I would have about um, eight or nine dollars, and that's only <laughs> in this term. So it's not going to make you rich. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I wouldn't be rich, but um, I would have eight or nine dollars. And um, I guess uh, the other point, I mean, it's really, I, I, you know, I'm not going to be lectured about housing, given the, uh, the editorial in today's uh, Dominion Post about the district plan, about we need to put housing where people want to live. I actually think what you mean to say there, Councillor Calvert, is I want to put housing where I want people to live, um, given the amendment for this plan so I support housing along the street definitely it's important and this is an urban development project uh, but people want to live all over the city not just along uh, mass rapid transit routes anyway I won't be voting for any of these and keen to get on with it thank you Councillor Matthews now um Councillor Rush did you want to you want to speak to the substantive or to the amendment uh, well I'll just say a couple of words to the go, go for your life yep it's okay I mean yep. I I just a little bit surprised about the, um, I suppose the um, the passion against these amendments. I don't think they really made much difference other than some reporting. So I'm pretty relaxed about them. That's all. Okay, thank you, Councillor Condi. Thank you. Um, well, I think the advice that we've had from from staff is that they're not relaxed about them, Councillor Rush. Um, and Councillor Calvert, you as well said that, that you didn't think they were contentious, but I think the advice from staff has very clearly been that they are concerned about them because um, particularly 3A and 4A are taking us out of step with our partners at Green. A really important issue. Um, You have to be very clear about the preferred option that we are choosing. And also we are very clear in the report as well. to be considered as, as an option as option. But there is a difference between the fundamental decision that we just uh, it is a big deal. 3A and 4A, and I strongly encourage others not to as well. Um, it would actually set a really terrible precedent. It would be the first time that we would be out of step with partner decisions on, on this matter. Um, moving on to 10A, I think it's, you know, for me, the issue here is that the, the indicative business case is going to be a 500 plus page technical document. Um, it's not, we're not talking about a kind of 15 page submission to government that we would get a chair or a mayor to look at as well as the chief executive. This is a massive technical report and it doesn't actually include any decisions in it. It's really just checking the technical report. Um, so the decisions that are being made today, they won't be made at the end of IBC. The key decisions are that we are going ahead to the DBC process and that we have an agreed preferred option of, across all three partners. Um, so I think it's entirely appropriate that it would go to the chief executive um, the IBC is going to take a while to finish. Um, it may not be finished before the election. In fact, I think that the deadline or the aim for it might be in more in November, December. So I think it is reasonable for us to just um, delegate this to the chief executive, who is our representative on the Let's Get Wellington Review Board and does have um, the rights to, and the, the expertise to look at that document. 
27, 28, I'm, I'm quite comfortable with. I actually think with the new wording, thank you, Councillor Cover, they're reasonably comfortable. I would just say it's disappointing that you didn't actually work to just include them in the substantive um, and, and updating those, those words in the first place that could have made everything a bit smoother. Thank you. Um, Councillor Rush, your hand is up. It's still that's that's the old hand. Yep, cool, good. Um, Councillor Calvert, right of reply on the amendment. Thank you. And um, yes, yeah, so look, um, I've heard what people have um, have to say, and it's interesting the different perspectives on things. As um, we are a, a, a broad range of people around this table. Um, I can't see how um, making some of these recommendations is problematic. I mean, the, the problematic issue is how it's all been presented to us. I mean, it's almost like a done deal. You know, you, they've jacked up, and this is the way I feel, is that we've already unscheduled a Greater Wellington Regional Council meeting first thing this morning, then our meeting, as if we're just going to tick everything off. Now, given that we've only got these papers on Thursday night, um, that um, and there's been two extensive workshops having to be had, and we were only getting some of that information through late last night and even this morning. Um, I don't think it's um, unreasonable um, to be um, putting this information forward. But nevertheless, um, I think it's important to note that we are going to be looking at bus rapid transit, and this is what I we need to be clear about. Um, this is part of the detailed business case, and, and we should be there. Um, and yes, um, Councillor Matthews, I think you're just highlighting how much you can't count. I think I've done far more than eight or nine amendments, not slowing um, let's get welly moving down, but trying to make sure that it's delivering what people want. And, um, and as we've seen, even just a, a simple example is a Cobbin Drive. People wanted a different solution, but we ignored it and went for the crossing. So um, very happy to be lectured on stuff, but um, yeah, just I think it's important to get the information correct. And um, yeah, so I don't think I need to say much more, um, but um, yeah, because it's not tip for tat. So thank you. And I look forward to your um, um, support. Thank you, Councillor Calvert. Right, councillors, um, voting on the amendment. Uh, now, I, what I'll do is I'll take 3A and 4A um, together because they are they link together. Uh, then I'll take 10A, then I'll take the collection in 27. Um, and actually, Heidi, if you can pop up the... Um, oh, good, we've got that. Right, good. Yep, thank you. And then 28. I, I don't detect... Can I, can I take 27 and 28 together? I'll take them separately anyway, I can't, I can't see everybody. Okay, right. Okay, well, let's vote on 3A and 4A, or the amended, the, the red writing in both. Voting on clauses 3A and 4A, two votes in favour, 12 against. The two in favour, Councillor Cover and Councillor Wolf. Thank you. Uh, and the change, <coughs> the change to 10A, please. Voting on 10A, four votes in favour, 10 votes against, four in favour, Councillor Calvert, Rush, Wolf, and Young. Thank you. Uh, and 27. Voting on 27, 14 votes in favour, carried unanimously. Thank you, and 28. Voting on 28, 13 votes in favour, one against, the one against, Councillor Young. Thank you, okay, well that takes us back to the substantive. Uh, now, I think Councillor Rush, you were 
wanting to speak on the substantive. So you're next, and at this stage, that is the only other speaker. Thank you, Your Worship. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, yep. I, I, I am in a bit of two minds today, colleagues, but I'm going to set out a few concerns or reasons why, as you know, I committed to the Eastern Ward that I'd review each and every business case thoroughly. And I'm not even sure if I've seen the indicative business case. I think it's still in preparation. But you might recall that um, about 18 months ago, we had a meeting with our colleagues from Greater Wellington. And uh, out of nowhere, uh, the weighting of the project got tipped towards uh, re reducing carbon. Nothing wrong with that, but for such a massive change, I would have expected and had hoped that there would have been some backup on what exactly that meant, because what we've been to told is that the high density narrative results in low carbon cities. But when I look at the evidence, I can look at Auckland with 286.7 uh, persons per kilometre, weighing at seven tonnes per capita with the wonderful Wellington City Council, 658.7 persons per kilometre, just under that at 6.9. Upper Hutter, oh sorry, Lower Hutter even better with 261 persons per kilometre, 4.9 uh, kilograms per tonne. So for me, there needs to be a lot more work and justification as high density is, is the answer to, to carbon neutrality. Um, and it would be nice to have had that. I also noticed that the business case does not actually um, accommodate uh, the great moves that are happening under the uh, emissions trading scheme. Now, this is the number one policy tool that the government has in place. It's uh, in line with uh, the uh, UN's guidelines and IPCC and all that sort of stuff. And the economics, climate economists say it's the best thing you can do. And, uh, and nowhere does it feature in the analysis. And I did ask for that yesterday. I know I asked for that late, um, but I haven't seen it. But I think it's a big uh, gap in, in our analysis, if we are going to make decisions based on reducing carbon, we need to know what the emissions trading scheme is doing. It's 80 bucks a tonne at the moment, and that's up uh, at least four times what it was, I think, uh, four or five years ago, and it's going up further. We're understanding what they would do in the future. We talk about urban development. I, I, I'm of the view that urban development will be led when the private sector start putting pressure on council, and I'm not I'm not sure that's actually happening for the areas that we're talking about for light rail. The partnerships that I'm seeing are with Kaingarua, which are great, um, but we're going to need a lot more than uh, the government agency to, to actually deliver high density if the private sector are not chomping at the bit. What I see the private sector doing is chomping at the bit for the CBD, which is understandable, and undoubtedly Transmission Gully and the areas around Whitby, which will deliver lovely suburbs for families of the future. I am concerned that the original um, proposal, the proposal that Wellingtonians uh, considered to be uh, uh, you know, supported in 2018 included the second terrace tunnel. And that got taken out as a consequence of you know, political interference that, uh, that sort of um, distracted from what the engineering and transport experts were, were telling us. So that, that concerns me that, um, that we've, we've ended up with a, uh, a project that has been underpinned by, uh, by politics. And uh, it does make me wonder whether that's sustainable. I do think uh, having worked a number of business cases for major projects around the world, 120 million New Zealand dollars, 60 million US is a, is a huge amount. But nevertheless, I do recognize that, seconds left. Yeah, I do recognize that um, this is complicated, but I do wonder guys, you know, since 2018, what have we done? We've still got a Mount Vic tunnel, but we don't know if it's going to be a parallel one or an angle one. We've got light rail or bus rapid, and at least we know it's going south now. So that's one thing, but it does seem to me that uh, a lot has lots happened uh, without much to show for it. But I'm not being critical. I do think Dave and his team have done well. So uh, politics of stopping things, uh, Councillor Fitzsimons, ask your friend, Councillor Panett, about that. Um, and... Um, I just do think that, you know, we do want to slow things down and maybe even stop them, Councillor Matthews, uh, because we don't like them. <laughs> I'm not going to apologise for that. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just, just a few thoughts, folks. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. Uh, okay, we've got Councillor Dave and Councillor Wall. Uh, kia ora. Um, I want to start off by just thanking the staff um, who have been involved in this for their excellent work. Um, the 
the amazing briefings, answering all of our questions and um, just having so much comprehensive information and sharing your very patient um, time with us. So I want to um, really, really thank you for that. I'm just going to begin by responding to Councillor Rush's last comments. Councillor Rush, it's like um, everyone else has, has political views, but yours aren't political. And actually, that's the reality is, is that your views are political too, and you don't want this to happen. That's, that's politics. So I think we just have to be open and honest about this. It's not just that the left are pol political and the right aren't, it's all politics. Um, I also want to just go back and reflect on the fact that the last significant transport investment in the city was actually in the year that I was born. So that's quite a long time ago, just saying, I'm not that young. Um, and what, what was decided then, and that was the urban motorway into Wellington, um, you know, was what was deemed right at the time, but the world has moved on and we can't just keep thinking that building roads will solve the current challenges. Um, and I think that the um, Deputy Prime Minister, um, when this was announced, um, you know, previous, uh, recently, um, his statement around um, this project not being about getting people out of Wellington or into Wellington, it's about how people move through Wellington, really resonated with me. This is about helping people be able to live their lives in a way that is enjoyable and not people sitting in cars feeling frustrated. Um, and I also want to reflect back on when um, Let's Get Wellington Moving was first sort of coming to fruition, how there were conversations about the issues of induced demand. There was a lot of um, a discussion about the fact that Four Lanes to the Plains was a big campaign in 2016 by a mayoral candidate, and it got energy. People were quite keen. But actually, when they started to delve into what would happen if you did build four lanes to the plains and you made a tunnel with four lanes through it for cars, was that in under 10 years' time, you would have congestion that was worse than the worst that we've had in the last few years. So it wasn't going to solve our problem for very long. And of course, it also wasn't going to help um, our environment. So, so quite rightly... Um, the people involved had to think pretty creatively about what was the right solution um, taking Wellington into the future. And that is challenging for us all because it means that there is going to be a, a lot of behaviour change that we all have to um, go through. And, um, and, you know, many of us are already starting there and trying to sort of challenge our thinking about whether we need to jump in the car to go down to the shops or whether we can walk or jump on a bike. And that will not be for everybody. And I do want to acknowledge um, Councillor Young's comments about, you know, some people need to drive. Older people, people who might um, not be able to get around easily. This is actually about making it easier for them to do it. Because at the moment, they currently have to sit in the queue with everybody else who could actually jump on a bus or walk or do something else. And, um, and they have to sit in their car and wait while everyone else gets where they're going as well. So this is actually about opening up choice, but also making it work better for what people need to be doing. And I think um, Councillor Rush just acknowledging that, yes, there will be some development in the outer parts of the Wellington region, but we also need places for people to live in the central city so that they can live near where they work. You know, we have a hospital, we have schools, we have a lot of um, services here, which at the moment people can't afford to live near, near where they work, and that creates a lot of inefficiency, but also people then are displaced from the community that they live in. So they leave there every day. And, you know, when we've seen in, in emergencies, people are at, in, in the city and their children are stuck at schools in the suburbs. Cool, thank you. Um, that that doesn't make sense. So we need to think, we need to think better about that. And I think the population projections argument, I just want to say, I think we have to be open to the fact that Wellington City is always going to be appealing for people to come and live in. No matter what's going on in our world, people want to be near where the jobs and the action are. So I think we just need to get on with this and do it. And um, I'm very excited to support this today, Kelga. Kia ora, uh, Councillor Wolf. Thanks, Your Worship. I'd, I'd like to thank the officers too, um, and particularly for the um, briefings in the last um, couple of days and for the ones that um, I've wholeheartedly attended um, prior to that. Um, you know, I've, I've listened very carefully um, to the, the, the feedback, the questions, the answers and, and the briefings. And I've also gone off and sought my my own council. Um, there, there is not a person in Wellington um, that would not be wishing to have a more efficient, effective, sustainable, more emission-friendly transport network to Wellington. I doubt that there'd be many at all, if any. Um, but I go and say this, um, we are not a bottomless pit. Unlike um, um, Waka Kotahi, who have um, the land transport levy, um, which they can um, use, and where the perception is that um, 
if there are blowouts, we'll just meet them. And Transmission Valley was um, one, one such um, example. I believe um, that our 20%, um, I, and I think Greater Wellington should think this as well, that our, our rate payer dollar um, needs to be um, accountable and it needs to be um, value packed. Um, and I, I actually um, couldn't see that in the report. Um, you know, $120 million for um, what it essentially is consulting in a, a business case is on the high side. And actually, I've never known Waka Kotahi to do anything but areas of, of this sort of type that are expensive. So here's my challenge. Um, do the work, pack the value in, um, try and get it under, under budget, and, and please don't ask for anything more. Because as Councillor Young and, and um, a number of other people have said, um, our constituents are, are doing it hard at the moment. Um, you know, this is a big investment. I'm probably going to vote for it. You know, like I, I think it's great. And I, I came out publicly and, and said that when Minister Wood um, spoke up the other day because I, I felt there was um, um, more, more substance than show by a long shot. Um, so, yeah, and I, I also have seen in the last four days, and it is a short time, a really short time when you're studying um, questions and answers um, beyond 10, 10 p.m. at night and, and working through things. It's, it's, I'm, not, I'm not sure of the, the um, fairness of that, that process. Um, I think that, that that's, that's something that um, actually has done my head in the full eight and a half years where we get short, a lot of information at short, short notice. Although, Councillor Day, I see you laughing there. Um, yeah, we have had a lot of the information in the past. I, I knew what was, what, what was going through your mind. But it, it, the details will be in one one place. Um, I would would have liked to have seen how um, the spend stacks up against other similar large infrastructure spends. Um, so yeah, that that's something that I would have would have really liked. And and finally, um, the um, Dave mentioned the integrated pathway. Um, yeah, uh, Councillor Panett, you you issued some challenges yourself earlier on. I'm issuing these challenges: alignment, cohesion phasing connectedness with other projects. And for goodness sake, um, let's not put Wellington through a whole heap of upheavals, um, which, which haven't been well thought out um, over the next 30 years. You know, I, I see Island Bay, for instance, I see um, Lambton Quay also. Um, I, I see what, what um, our community are feeling and, and I'm, I'm deeply aggrieved at, at what, what some of the effects have been on, on, on our people and particularly on our businesses. So this is the challenge, you know, make sure it is aligned, make sure it is co cohesive. You know, the phasing needs to be really responsible and, and, and the, the integrated pathway should be, and let's not have too many upheavals. Um, I'd also like to see a little bit more of a regional focus um, around State Highway 2. Thanks, Your Worship. Thanks, Councillor. Right, I think that gets us to no more speakers. So I'm going to exercise my right of reply. I'm just looking at the notes that I got. There's a few things that I did want to um, respond to. Um, first of all, thank you, um, councillors, all of those who thank the, the staff. Um, and uh, as um, uh, councillor Fitzsimons, I know that we started, uh, you one of the fairly, fairly early ones, and thank you for your, um, your thanks, particularly of Moana. Um, because um, that's always the danger of picking one that you go and miss others as well. So, you know, but it's true for we've had a, a lot of great staff, uh, both within the program and within our own team uh, and uh, within GDUB um, and Waka Katahi, who've done a great, a great deal of work and we are very grateful uh, to them. Um, Councillor Condi, um, your, I think two, the two comments I probably want to respond to there. First of all, the stream uh, issue. Um, yeah, look, I mean, I, I agree. I think that what, what's been interesting is that, that now a little bit of thinking about what may be a partial rather than a full um, uh, exposure of the stream as a possibility. Look, we'll just see where we go. It's definitely worth exploring. Uh, and if it's possible, that'd be, that'd be great. Um, and uh, <clears throat> your comment about future proofing Mount Vic for um, MRT in the future. Well, look, I agree with that because um, we've seen in the past, as you said, um, uh, times and ironically, these are roads. Um, 
uh, where you sort of go, I mean, I, I pleaded with uh, NZTA as it was then uh, to make the Aris Tunnel a proper two lane or four lane uh, thing rather than uh, three and a half. And of course that makes it very much harder if we were ever going to move traffic off Vivian Street and put it on uh, Caro Drive to do that. Uh, a lot more expensive and the terrace obviously is, is in, in conundrum as well, having built for some interesting reason three three lanes rather than four. Um, Councillor Fitzsimons, 100% um, right about uh, all these transport decisions being um, being hard, but thank you for your really positive uh, endorsement. Um, and <laughs> you mentioned um, significant disruption as it's built. And I think that is one of the things we've got to make sure it's not just, hey, we've made the decision, wind up, off you go and do it, because we know that doesn't that's that doesn't work. We've seen, we saw that out in Kilburnie a few years ago with uh, when we did up to did the shopping centre up and it took twice as long and cost twice as much as we expected and of course all sorts of grief for the, the businesses there. That was a lesson which said you've got to keep it, you've got to keep on top of these things. The CRL in Auckland is an absolutely classic case of a, a very large project which is causing an enormous amount of pain to the, um, the community in that area. Now one of the things that we are working on is actually having the, the local community, the business community, whoever it is that's appropriate in a particular area, having a seat at the delivery table in the sense of being being consulted very, very closely, being involved in that decision-making process. But do you go, do you work at night? Do you work during the day? Do you go long hours, short hours? Uh, how do we do those things? Do we go on one side of the road or both sides of the road? All those kind of things to ask the community, how do we minimise the disruption um, of the actual delivery of the project? And I think that's a really important thing, something I'll certainly be uh, keen to see for some time. Um, Councillor Young, I'm, I was, um, not surprised, but I was um, disappointed uh, by your uh, your approach. There. Look, we need to do. I, I think you're basically saying don't do. You don't like this at all. Um, the the costs. Look, it's very easy to chuck costs around and say it's going to be much, 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 much more expensive. Let's pull a number out of the air. The numbers that we've got are 90, uh, the 95% uh, costing, which is that's a high degree of certainty, or a high degree of conservatism. I think you could say. Um, and also, I think we need to reflect that you know, there, there is the possibility of value engineering if the if the costs are too great. I think there's at least three or four different areas where you could do some very significant value engineering if that is um, uh, if that is required. I, I am inclined to agree with you that I think um, I I would have had real difficulty with this decision if it had been the option is option one and option two was nowhere. But I think keeping the two of them alive is the right way to go, and we'll see how it goes. We we'll see what the level of um, uh, urban development uplift is, and um, and it gives us those two. Uh, still being alive. So I think it was a, it was a good call by the cabinet um, and, and and I think that makes our life a lot easier at this point in time. I do agree with you about your comments around parking and around choices that people are making. We've obviously had a lot of those kind of discussions uh, within um, the last uh, few years. Um, but can I just say, um, and actually Councillor Calvert said the same thing, um, and, and Councillor Calvert, you said it's important that we provide accurate information to people because you both mentioned Cobham Drive. Can we be quite clear? that there was no decision made by this council about Cobham Drive. So do not blame this council. It was one of the things I was actually quite frustrated about, and Councillor Condi and the, and the Deputy Mayor will know, um, that we didn't get to have a say on this. And Councillor Condi, I can see nodding. Um, uh, because, uh, but we sometimes wear the flag for the decisions that other, other people make. Uh, but at least what we did get in that situation, because of the public feedback, and because there was some jumping up and down going on in private as well, um, that we have the, um, the commitment to look at how it goes and that if um, the delays are too significant, then there's a commitment to, uh, uh, to actually do a bridge or do a, a do grade separated option, which I think is reasonable. So people, it's not like there's no listening going on at all there. Um, Councillor Pannett, um, I hope you'll be pragmatic about this. I know that there are bits you don't like in the, in the package, but it is a package. Um, and, and your comment about CBC, if we we're going to go back in history, um, it's not true that there was nothing in common between CBC and transit. In fact, everything that CBC wanted was on the table. The only problem was the thing that they didn't want was also on the table. And that was the problem. They wanted everything. Um, and if we hadn't done that, we wouldn't have Caro Drive for better or for worse, but we'd be using Guzney Street and Vivian Street and State Highway 1. And that would be considerably worse than what we've got at the moment. Uh, thank you for your comments around housing. Um, can I just say, if you want social housing and affordable housing in that area, one of the best things we can do is have an empowered chip to help us deliver that in a way which actually makes financial sense. So Councillor Panett, you've 
give us give some thought to that when it comes to the paper in August on that matter. Um, I think just about there. All right, Councillor Day, look, thank you for your challenging of um, the comments made by Councillor Calvert uh, and others about um, the nine and nine out of ten Wellingtonians. Look. I, th I think that's a very unfair um, level of waiting for the council. Uh, it did come at a really low ebb for the city in terms of, you know, red traffic lights. Um, and, and to be fair, and, and parliamentary protest, to be fair, we had a very bumpy first part of the training. But I think if you look at um, the second part of the training, we have, I think, worked mostly pretty collegially. We've had significant disagreements about how we deal with um, district planning act matters, but mostly it's been pretty collegial and we've got an extraordinary amount done. As I said at the beginning of this meeting, in the last two weeks, we have done more than most councils have done in three years, and considerably more of that. Uh, so I think we are doing everything that we can to try and do the things that our city uh, needs, and it would be helpful if the councillors, who are also part of the council, you're not absolved from it, um, actually took some responsibility for that as well. Um, Councillor Matthews, Thank you for your comments around momentum, and, and I hope you, you'll be a richer woman now, <laughs> having heard Councillor Calvert say comments. Um, Councillor Rush, look, I have sympathy, and I've seen, expressed this before about the weightings issue, but I don't think the weightings have been particularly material to how we've actually landed in terms of the options. I think we'd have ended up, uh, and I, those questions have been asked, we'd have ended up pretty much with the same place, almost regardless of what the, um, what the weightings were. I, I too felt that, that was an arbitrary process, but and I said that at the time, and I said it subsequently. But I don't think it matters too much. We are where we are, and I think we've got a good package uh, to move forward. You did say that um, we need more than KO uh, for the housing development, and the private sector need to be involved. I can 100% agree, and that's exactly what is likely to happen. There'll be areas for development. KO and city council may do some of them, but they will also likely reach out to the private sector to do a lot as well. And in I've got to go back to Trainia now because it got killed last training. Um, we actually had a, a proposal for an urban development agency. We consulted on it with the, um, the, the community and the business community were really enthusiastic. They wanted to work with us. And so I think you will find uh, the business community will be very keen and that's obviously a place uh, that we need uh, to go. I, I share your concerns about the need for a decent ring road. And I think you shouldn't look at that as though it's creating extra tarmac for, for vehicles because we are going to take some space out for vehicles, particularly on the keys um, and through the Golden Mile. So it's it's kind of a replacement because uh, I'd be really interested to see how the system performs without doing something out there. Um, and that is just about all I needed to respond to. Thank you all, councillors. And um, now, are there any bits that people want to take separately? Can we just do number three? Sorry? <laughs> Sorry, Andy. Number three, thank you. Okay, so number three, cool. Anybody else for anything else? Um, yes, can you, um, number 17, number 18, and number 19. And do you want those three together, 17, 18, 19? Um, they're, di they're different. You can do 18 and I know, 19. but what I mean is if you're the only one who wants to vote differently on them, then, then I can do right. that. Does anybody else want to take those separately from each oh, sorry, other? Sorry, which ones are you talking about? 17, 17 18, 19. Andy 11. Okay, yep. Um, for me, uh, so I think we've done three, um, two, three, five, seven to 12. Okay, we're, we're starting getting rather a lot now. Um, okay, any others? And I'll see how I can juggle that. I'll start from the beginning and then work my way through. Okay, right. Okay, councils, get your voting buttons. We're gonna, we're gonna go one, two, Three. Right, okay, I'll work my way through this right from the beginning. Sorry, I was trying to explain all that and realised then I'm on mute, so that wasn't very helpful. Right, let's start with number one. Voting on clause one, 14 votes in favour, carried unanimously. Let's look forward to that being continued for a while. Number two. <coughs> Number 
Voting on clause two, 13 votes in favour, one against, one against, Councillor Young. Okay, number three. <coughs> Clause three, 12 votes in favour, two against, the two against, Councillor Tanner and Councillor Young. I almost can't help myself saying that's an interesting combination. <laughs> no, uh, we, we were four. together on character as well. Number <laughs> four. Clause four, 13 votes in favour, one against, the one against, Councillor Rush. Thank you. Clause five. Councillor Rush, thank you. Voting on clause five, 13 votes in favour, one against, the one against, Councillor Young. Clause six. Voting on clause six, 14 votes in favour, carried unanimously. Okay, clause seven, eight, nine, and 10. Are we gonna take those collectively? Yeah, take them, well, nobody's, nobody's asked, the one people asked me to take separately was seven to 12 who wanted to be taken separately, um, but by the same person, and 11, which is why I stopped at 10. Okay. Okay. Councillor Calvert, I think it was you or Councillor Young who asked for that separately. Uh, it was me. Okay. Uh, Thank Councillor you. Young. Councillor Calvert. Thank you. Voting on clauses seven through 10, 13 votes in favour, one against, the one against, Councillor Young. Okay, clause 11. Voting on 11, 12 votes in favour, two against, the two against, Councillors Wolf and Young. Clause 12. Voting on clause 12, 13 votes in favour, one against, the one against, Councillor Young. Thank you. Um, now we've got clauses 13 to 16. Clauses 13 through 16, 14 votes in favour, carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, 17 to 19. Voting on clauses 17 through 19. 
12 votes in favour, two against. The two against, Councillor Calvert and Councillor Rush. Thank you. Okay, um, so I haven't had anybody want to take any of the others separately. So I propose to, excuse me, taking the rest uh, to the end. So right way through to 27. 28. Thank you. Okay. Voting on clauses 20 to 28, 14 votes in favour carried unanimously. Thank you very much. So that, um, councillors, that completes the uh, the paper and completes the business that we have to do. Um, so well done, everyone. Um, and um, this, uh, this is a really significant milestone. Oh, nice to see you there, Liz, too. So thank you. Thank you for, for hanging in with us, too. Um, councillors, that takes us to the end of the meeting. Um, the only other thing that we can do is, is to, to have the closing karakia. Um, so would somebody like to volunteer to do that one for me? Liz, I think you're there. Or would you like to give us a closing karakia? Put you on the spot. No, that's fine. I, I just want to say that I, um, I actually enjoyed listening to the debate this afternoon. Good, good. Una here, una here, una here, ki te uru tapu nui, ki a wātea, ki a māma, te nākau, te tinana, te wairua, e te ara takatū, ko e ara e rungo, whaka ira aki ki runga, ki a wātea, ki a wātea, a rā kua, ki, kua wātea. Tēnā koe. Uh, thank you, councillors. Well done, everyone, and uh, go and have a, a well-earned uh, rest of the afternoon. Good thank cheering, you Andy. Thank, thank you, you LGWM team. <laughs> thank you. It was very good cheering. Thank you, <laughs> cheer. You did a great job.